Uh, as always, define those travels as you can. What is going on, everybody? Welcome, Gogglenites, Gogorifics, Gog Peoples, to Gog.com's 10th anniversary. Welcome. What's going on? I hope everyone is doing well and is looking forward to the stream today. Welcome to episode 145 of Pen and Pixels. I am your host, Arvin Eleron, uh, and this is our show that we do every week, once a week on Tuesdays from 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern, focusing on story and narrative in games. Uh, and in this particular case, focusing on Pathfinder Kingmaker, which the series continues. And I will talk more about that in just a second. And before I get there, though, I do want to thank everyone for being here. And I want to remind everyone about ways to support the channel. If you haven't done so already, please consider supporting the stream um, by uh, following the channel, following GOG, because, you know, we that's lovely if you're able to do things like that. That's always a good time. Uh, please make sure to check out uh, the um, uh, make sure that you sub to the channel if you can, because you can get some awesome things if you sub to the channel, including awesome DRM free emotes and all that kind of good stuff. And lastly, but certainly not least, um, please consider consider checking out us all individually as streamers. We all have awesome individual uh, streams that we try to do and all have our own subsystems and Patreons and that kind of good stuff. So tons of content for you all the time if you can check us out on our individual channels. And I want to um, thank uh, Freswar also um, for uh, doing this stuff just before me. And actually, I realized I, I needed to just double check something quickly because I want to make sure um, I'm I know that it was sometime in late September, early October that I began to stream. So I want to check out exactly when this was. Let's see if I go back to the very first one. Um, yes. So I was, that's what I thought it was September 30th. So I have now been streaming on this channel for three years, folks. This is my three-year anniversary of streaming. I uh, published my first one over on my channel on September 30th, 2015, which means it would have been September 29th. So this has been three years that I've been streaming on GOG. I've been streaming actually six years over um, on on Twitch in general. But three years um, I've been here, which is hard to believe. So um, thank you all for having gone along uh, on the ride with me. And with that said, let me pop this up here in just a minute by doing this. Ah, there we go. There we are. Um, my daughter is with us. My daughter is, uh, little Arv is not feeling well today, so she was home from school. So she is working on uh, making up a game. Um, she's actually uh, writing a game as we speak, a board game. Um, and uh, I'm going to be playing some Pathfinder Kingmaker for all of you as we do that. Um, and I hope everyone is well. I just did a uh, game book stream on my own channel um, that was about uh, called Sagard the Barbarian. So I'm wearing my What is Best in Life Conan shirt. Uh, a, to crush your enemies. B, to see them driven before you. C, to hear the lamentations of the women. Or D, all of the above. So that's, that's yeah, exactly. That's that's what we've got. So um, anyway, I, that was a good time. And um, yeah, a lot of stuff going on over on my channel everywhere else. One note that I want to make for all the uh, wonderful GOG folks is uh, I am going to be doing, as I said, a series of Pathfinder Kingmaker. But on occasion, of course, once per month, we do D&D &D with GOG. Um, Storm King's Thunder with uh, Screaming Joypad, with Pyron Jade, with Darksaber 2K, and Tasty Chai. Um, we're going to be doing that in a few weeks, um, close to Halloween time, and we'll be doing some cosplay thanks to an agreement that Pyron totally came up with on her own and didn't just have it imposed upon her. Um, and uh, that's going to be happening uh, in a few Tuesdays from now. But for the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing Pathfinder Kingmaker. But I do want to mention that for anybody who happens to be Canadian, is in the Ottawa area, um, a week from this Saturday, I'm going to be up at CanCon. I'm actually getting there on a week from Friday, um, which is a speculative literature convention. So I'm going to be talking about, going to be on a couple of panels. I'm going to be doing a reading and so forth. But on Saturday, I'm also going to be a, doing a live in-person event of Adventures in Middle-Earth live in front of a studio audience and I'm going to be obviously broadcasting that to Twitch as well so if any of you happen to live uh, near Ottawa and would like to stop by and say hello and watch that that would be awesome it's going to be really exciting it's going to be not just me but also Amal Amatar who's one of my players who lives in Ottawa and is going to be a special guest at the con she will be there Will Jones who runs the Encounter Roleplay Twitch channel he lives in Canada he's driving down there to make that and then my two other players Terry Toons and Trendane who are German and Californian respectively German and American respectively are going to be um, Zooming or Skyping in, I guess, um, to participate. But it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it, and it's going to be a good time. So that is the deal with that. Um, yep, three years of ARV on GOG. That's right. Um, will the ARVlet get to decide on the character being created? Uh, well, I already made my character, is the thing, Sharian. This is a continuation 
of my playthrough from last week. But um, so, yes, I know that uh, Lovelust actually did this as well. She's going to be continuing a playthrough of this on her own channel. Um, and that's cool only because I get to I'm glad that I get to continue to play it here with you folks. That's great. Um, so I'm going to be doing a playthrough of this again. As I've said all along, this is not an anti divinity thing. I really love Divinity Original Sin 2 as well. It's just that I keep coming up with these other games that I'm like, ooh, I got to try that. So I'm um, going to be playing Pathfinder Kingmaker for a while. Hopefully it will continue to be as awesome as it was in the opening release stream session that we did last week. Um, but we will see. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's the second stream. The second stream. Release stream was last Tuesday, Sharon. So, But that said, um, let us get moving on over to the awesomeness known as um, the awesomeness known as Pathfinder Kingmaker. Let's do it. Okay. That's what that time zone difference works out to. That's right. I'm going to be with you, by the way, until 7 p.m., at which point Alex is going to be stopping by to play CrossCode, um, which is a game that I actually played with um, the our vocalist and my voice team. So uh, my daughter's a big fan of CrossCode. So uh, I and I think it's really neat. Um, it's now been released fully um, and I'm actually my voice team uh, did, did some really cool voices because there's a lot of cool characters in it. So it's neat. It's kind of neat stuff. Where's the Gregory Rose the Jew you told us was going to be here? That's me. And I'm here. Say again. Oh, no. Just the same four. <sighs> yep. Nothing new so far. Stay here forever. I know. I know it. It's true. Um, two streams in one day. That's right, Tobik. That's the way Tuesdays go. That is the way Tuesdays go. Okay. Uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker. Um, why is Pathfinder Kingmaker not in my list here? The heck happened to Pathfinder King? Oh, there it is. Because it's staring me right in the face, chat. That's that's why. It's because it's staring right now. Uh, why did it say another name on the intro screen? I don't know what you mean, but... Um, God Galaxy is updating. What? I didn't think that God Galaxy would update at this moment. Darn you, automatic God Galaxy update. Okay. Fortunately, you've already updated, so that's good. I was gonna say, yeah, CrossCode's cool. Um, it definitely is a definitely is a cool game. It said Avery something. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm not sure what it is you saw, but it definitely is not what that's not what I put down. I will I will double check very quickly. No, Arvin Eleron. Oh, you talk about Arvin Eleron? That's that's my handle. That's my Twitch handle, if that's what you mean, WDB. That is my Twitch channel. There we go. Here we are. You like the music? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I do. My name, my real name is Gregory Wilson, yes. But my Twitch handle is, is Arvin Eleron, which I've gone by on Twitch since I started back in 2012. No, 2011, really, is when I started watching in November or December, I guess it was. Late November, early December, something like that. Um, but I started streaming in April of 2012. Mm -hmm. I played it once um, last time I did the release stream last week. It's a game that just came out. Hey, it's pretty good so far, yeah. Quarter Senna, that's right. Yep, my daughter, who's now in fifth grade. That's all they can see is just like a quarter of you over on that side. Okay. Are moving on to Oleg's, that's me. Okay, now we just got started um, and got through the little tutorial area just at the beginning. I haven't gotten into any Kingmaker, like, king kingdom management thing or anything else, so this is all brand new. Okay. Game loaded. Okay. Um. Uh, hum. Let's, uh, check out my journal, shall we? Okay. Um. Okay, we did... Okay, I assume that means that we completed this. Okay, yeah, let's let's not do the complete quest because that will confuse the heck out of me. All right, we've got two of them. Stolen Land, setting off on our first big adventure. I know, I know, pretty much as a baby, I know it. I know it because I started streaming when she was 
2012 April, so she had just turned four. Um, and now she is ten. <laughs> She's in fifth grade now. Okay, we're setting off on our first big adventure. Jamandi Aldori, a Restavik sword lord, is testing the contenders, weighing who shall be ruler of the Stolen Lands. There's only one way to prove that you're worthy of the title. Rid the area of the ravaging bandits and their leader, the bloody cutthroat known only as the Stag Lord. Tremble, ye scoundrels. We are coming. Okay. Keep track of passing time. We have no more than three months to conquer the Stolen Land. Okay. So this will be 89 days and 23 hours. And then we got a bitter rival. Meet with Tartuccio, the gnome sor soldier, uh, sorcerer Tartuccio, our leader's rival for the Baron's Cornet, is wandering somewhere in the Stolen Lands. He is cunning, dangerous, and definitely preparing something nasty for us. One way or another, we must defeat him. Our daring Arvin Elleron, the insidious sorcerer Tartuccio, received a special task from Jamandi Eldori, a chance to claim their own barony, but only one of them may prevail. We must seek Tartuccio out in the Stolen Lands and find out what our rival is busy with. He's busy with finding out what it's going to be like to come in second. That's what he's coming out with. Okay. Um. That's neat. You're big. You're very huge. Whoa, oh, there's somebody on the road. Get ready. Okay. Uh. Mystery surrounds King Castruccio Rovetti's accession to the throne of Pitax. Rumors say that some greater power helped him rise to power and hide any traces of villainy and trickery. Okay, what do we got? We got a wolf. We actually got three wolves. All right. Three wolves, huh? So. I am your shield. Okay. I am going to charge you. I am never wrong. I am. I am going to probably shoot you. My formation is wrong also. Hey, what's up, Rikation? Yeah, I do too. I really do too. Okay, I'm going to have to move Amiri back into place because this is not right. She's in the wrong spot, but hopefully it won't matter for today. Um, I, I would Shoot. like you to charge you. Ugh. What? Not doing it wrong. Fine. The spell is flawed. I wrote it like I saw it. Okay, and days. May I suggest another way to use this spell? Adventures call to that. Can you Go. make an epic pose? I need inspiration. Oh. Um, Amiri. Tear them apart! Okay, I would like you to go here. Okay, I would like you guys to get Let rid of that wolf. One. I would like you to... This will hurt! Okay, I would like you to do something else. Daze you. May I suggest another Why way is that not... this spell? Oh, not Cure Light Wounds. Serves you right. Look at me, Gorum! Ah! What the heck is going on with... All right. May I suggest to the lady use this spell? May I suggest to the lady use this spell? What is it? What is that doing? Oh, reaction. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I was I was trying to make it into something cooler. Sorry. That's helpful. Yes, thank you. Why is Days not working? Why is it doing that? Okay. It's high time to set up camp and rest. In camp, all characters restore some of their lost hit points. No, I'm not using a self-portrait as your avatar, but thank you for thinking so, uh, Vengeance. Yes, it does have a story mode uh, difficulty. I don't know if it's called that. Um, okay, once everyone's gathered around the bonfire, press the Manage button to see a special camp interface used to set the resting time, distribute the following responsibilities among your party members. Hunting, camp, camouflage, cooking, special ability. That's cool. Resting your camp and be attacked by enemies. Okay. We'll do all of that in a minute, but before I do that, I want to find out why that was happening. Okay. Let's take care of the four. Let's fix the formation here. Um, so, I would like you to go up here. Okay. 
Okay. Is that right? Yes, 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 good. Um, because I want my two main soldiers up front, the ones that are the big sort of fighters that can take more damage, and I want him behind, is why. Oh, yeah. That's cool. There's a lot of cool little... Look at that. Really neat. A lot of really cool graphic details here. Um, okay. So we're going to save this. And then we're going to try resting. Let's make a camp here. That's pretty cool, actually. Okay, so let's see. Hunting is required for a rest. Actually, I don't know if I want to rest here. I think I need to rest. I'm just going to use... Um, Okay, let's... What do we got for a heal? Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so you're out of spells. Okay, I take that back. Okay. So, alright. You're a cat... So, we're gonna do this. Um, we got hunters. We got camp camouflage. Now, I have a question. Um, do... Those of you who have played this before... Does this sort of go to what it thinks default are your best players or your best characters for a certain role? Like, in other words, are the default characters that are set up here, is this, is Amiri my best possible hunter? Am I, is Lindsay the best possible cooker, etc., etc.? Or do I need to micromanage that? Does anybody know? Because I don't... I want to make sure that I'm... Before I do this resting thing, I want to make sure that I'm ready to go. Amiri's totally fine. But does it just set it up that way? <laughs> Gross. I don't want to min-max, believe me. Um, I, <laughs> that's funny. No, I don't want to min-max. I just, uh, I just want to make sure that I got this. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Listen, Lindsay. Can you make up a legend about me? A short one, at least. That's part of the, like, the mix there. That's really neat. So, the hunters forge food equal to four rations, safe camouflage, um, prepared an excellent recipe, hearty meal. Okay. Ooh, is that the morning? That's cool. It's misty. They really did. I'm really impressed with what they handle graphically. Am I... Wait a minute. Am I not maximum healed? Why is... Why am I not... Okay, so it has no, like, rest until heal. She got her cure light wounds back, though, so there's that. Hmm, yeah, that's okay, though. Okay. That's really neat. Yep, 7.35 in the morning. Was something. Buddy. What? There's a bunny back there. Oh, hello, bunny. Yeah, I went off the screen. That's cute. Why are there so many snakes here? Little garden snakes. Yeah, they go so fast. Another bunny. Is that a bunny? No, not. We're just looking around. I'm there. I do what I must. Because I'm exploring some of this area here. Ooh. See what stuff there might be. <laughs> Kill the wabbit. 
Okay. So, no. Yeah, it really is. I... I... Okay. Let's do it up. I'm Lindsay, the author of the book you, my dear reader, hold in your hands. I once studied the Academy of the Arts in Pitax, but I decided that a real bard doesn't belong. Something. On we go. I hope I'm going the right way, by the way. Oleg, yeah, I am going the right way. Resting would be nice, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I can rest. Hunting took 16 hours, four rations, camouflage is successful, hearty meal. Nice. <laughs> I literally rested right outside the doors. Yes, so I'd like to enter this location. Demons, 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 and devils are three different types of creatures, each evil and dangerous in their own way. Okay. Ah, a little rain effect. Such a cool effect. Okay. Excellent recipe. It's quality work. Well, for a minute I thought the fire, fire was like, the fort's on fire! And I'm like, oh, wait, that's a torch. Okay. Guess it's not on fire. Save yourselves, fools! What? I mean, save yourselves. What? Hey, come back here! Oh. Save yourselves. Is something under attack? Let's save it up just in case. In due time. In the name of the stag lord, the <laughs> lawful authority in the stolen lands, we demand this week's tax and some beer. Also, I look exactly like Arvin Elrond's portrait. And where's that pretty wife of yours, Oleg? She should serve as dinner. Quiet down, dimwit. Oleg, we're just here for the Stag Lord's tax. Hand over the money and we'll be on our way. You want to drink some of my blood too? I'm sick of you. You're like locusts. You think you control everything around here just because you put up with that painted rag of yours? You come here, squeeze us dry, and come ag- Ah, you must be guests from Restov. I'm not interested in bloodshed, but I won't let you rob this man. Be on your way and I'll let you go in peace. All right, we'll leave. But what makes you think we won't just return with greater numbers? Well, the fact that I'm better than you. Why would we leave when we've got easy pickings from rest stop before us? We'll rip out your guts and empty your pockets. Oh, Two well. Victory. You guys just had to do it. Okay, let's begin with a charge. Let's have you also charge. Okay. Exactly. Save yourselves! Alright, go. <laughs> Dazed. Alright, that's good. Let us strike as one! Tear them apart! You should have run! Miss, 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 miss. Alright, that's one down. Serves you right. Oh, wow. Uh, that's bad. Um, someone just took a lot of damage. Um,. Nice. Huzzah! Okay, work. They're all clones of us. Nice. And we all leveled up. Outstanding. Okay. So, we've got a barbarian. Uh, we're going to stick with barbarian. Um, yeah, which is what we just actually ended up doing. Okay. Now, oh my gosh, what is this chart I'm looking at? Uh, okay. 
At third level, okay, so this is only level... At second level, a barbarian gains a rage power. She gains another rage power for every two levels of barbarian stand after second level. Gains the benefit of rage powers only when raging. Some of these powers require the barbarian to take an action first. Okay, so... Um... Can I... What is going on? Oh, yeah. We're staying on level two. Thanks. I see. All right. I don't have any ability points to allocate. I don't use spells, but I do have skill points. So, let's see. Um, not about the persuasion. We're going to up that. That's going to be useful because uh, if you're trying to move from one to another, we don't it'd be as likely to take um, attacks there. Let's see. Um, I like the persuasion idea. Yeah, I like these. Okay, good. That takes care of a Miri. Ah, my rage power. Okay, so here we go. While raging, animal fury. While raging, the barbarian gains a bite attack. Used as part of a full attack, the bite attack has made the barbarian's full base attack bonus. If the bite hits, it deals 1d4 points of damage. Okay. Uh, beast Totem. While raging gains two claw attacks, considered primary attacks, made it the barbarian's full base attack bonus. Um, claws deal 1d6 points of slashing damage, plus the barbarian's strength modifier. Blah, 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 blah. So, Beast Totem lesser. Guarded stance, more defensive posture, plus one dodge bonus to her armor class. Seems like it seems odd that you would rage and then immediately like I am angry and therefore defensive. Like I don't I don't know. Lethal stance. Focus your strikes gains a plus one competence bonus on melee attack rolls and thrown weapon attacks rolls. Stance rage power uh, activates a stance rage power. Current stance melee ends. Reckless stance plus one bonus on attack minus one to AC. That's not a good idea. Ten foot enhancement bonus to her base speed. Hmm. So. I'm wondering if this be if this beast totem thing, you get the one d six points of slashing damage. Does that does that take the place of my normal weapon? So normally I would have a sword, but when I rage, it means I get the claws, and so I'm using those instead. Or does it get added on in addition to my regular battle, my re my regular weapon damage? Does anybody know? Because obviously that makes a big difference, right? Like if, because otherwise. And see, the only thing is, I would say lethal stance. It seems weird to do guarded stance, but I like the idea of having it harder for her to be hit. Because I need tanks, really. So, I don't know. We'll send a stream Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. I don't think so. <laughs> That's funny. So what do you folks think? Um, if I use one of these... Because I'm trying to decide between lethal stance is a possibility. Um, guarded stance. Hello, Lejoge. Or swift foot. Mm, I don't know. I don't feel like the animal fury or the beast totem lesser is really functional. I don't really like... Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think about what this does, though. This is a barbar- well, I'm just leveling up. Um, so right now, this is just a Miri. So I'm just trying to decide how I want her to be. I'm trying to decide if the- what I'm curious about is whether Beast Totem um, is going to do more damage in addition to her normal weapon damage, or if, when I rage, the Beast Totem takes over for the weapon. So it's either or. I want to know if it's either or or if it's plus. Can't use claws and weapons at the same time? Okay. All right, then I think I'm going to go with lethal stance. I think I'm going to go with more damage. Okay. And blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh, wait. I already have lethal stance? Wait a second. I already have lethal stance? No, okay, okay, okay. That's fine. I thought it was, I thought it was like I already had one, so... Okay, so we're going to go with lethal. Lovely. Okay, Valerie. Valerie, we're going to stick with you as a fighter. We're going to allocate skill points, and... 
Man, your athletics is low. We're going to move this up slowly. Don't need persuasion. Um, I assume that's just because of your armor. Negative 15. Why is it so low? Animal Fury is later when your base attack speed goes up. You're gaining it. Okay, I gotcha. Um, yeah, my main character is a ranger. Um, I don't know if it's a... I don't know what I'm going to specialize it into. I'm thinking about the possibility of Arcane Archer. Um, and I also kind of played with the idea of being a duelist. But I really think I want to be a ranged character. So, I think, yeah. Um, okay, so I need to think about whether... Why is this so low? Is it just because of our armor is that low? Yeah, because of the banded meal and the tower shield. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Solid shot. Outstanding. All right, bonus combat feat. Okay, weapon focus. Um, get a plus one bonus on all attack rolls made during the selected weapon. Okay. Allied spellcaster, no. Armor focus, maybe, but no. Blind fight, no. Combat mobility, easily move through a dangerous melee. Plus four bonus to armor class. It's possible. Combat reflexes. Equal to my dexterity bonus. Ah, okay, wait. What is my dexterity bonus? Plus one. So I can make an extra... That's interesting. An extra attack of opportunity. Hmm. Coordinated defense. Um, no, because I have to do it with both of them. Endurance. No. Exotic weapon proficiency. No. Improved initiative is possible. Power attack. Um, precise strike. What about shield focus? Increase the AC bonus. Be used by one. Um, shielded caster. I don't remember if Amiri actually has shields. That's the only problem with that. Um, Non-recommended, yeah. So the real question is whether Amiri has a shield, because I like the idea of shield wall. It's either shield wall, shield focus, or weapon focus. They recommend weapon focus. I don't remember if Amiri has a shield or not. Uh... Wait a second. Amiri, do you have a shield? That's not Amiri. No, you have a two-handed sword. Alright, never mind. I don't want to do that. Never mind shield focus. So, basically, the choice is between... Yeah. Okay. So, the choice is between weapon focus... Or shield focus. And I think I'm going to go with weapon focus once. Then I want to go to shield focus after that. All right. Oh, God. What the devil weapon does she have? Problem with this is I don't remember what weapon she has. She's got... What does she have? A masterwork bastard sword. All right. So, bastard sword. So, fighter that weapon focus and bastard sword okay so why would you you would recommend shield focus or armor focus yeah i'm gonna do that next time i'm gonna do bastard sword once uh for her and then i'm gonna do shield focus next time will be the next one okay blah 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 burst barrier shield to screen himself from burst effects well Actually, yeah, she is a tower shield specialist. You know what? I take that back. I take that back. I am going to do that. Yeah, I take that back. I'm not going to do weapon focus. Um, I think you're right. Um, I'm going to do shield focus instead. Because of the tower shield specialist. Lovely. Okay. You hear the... Well, 
Okay, now my main guy. Actually, wait. Before I do that guy, let me let me level up Lindsay. Bard. Okay. Uh, we would like let's see, trickery, stealth. Yes. Quick question. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are you doing right now? What is all this for? I am leveling up uh, my characters and moving them to the next level. Why? Um, because they have enough experience to level up, so you want to do that so you get the higher skills and everything as you deal with different people. Hey, what's up, Takanjia? Okay, we're going to have that be a bard again. On bard again. Just can't wait to be a bard again. Okay, um... Backyardigans? Not backyardigans. Totally different. Trickery. Actually, you know what? I want your mobility up. Yeah. I want this up a couple points because I basically want that out of there. I want her not to have to be in danger of stuff. Okay, knowledge of the world. Let's get another trickery. So trickery is what we get with um, trickery is thievery, etc. Yes, okay, good, lovely. All right, bard talent. What do we got? Okay, weapon focus. We've got canny observer. Plus four bonus. Combat trick, fast stealth, iron guts. Skill focus. Hmm. Confounding blades. No, crippling strike. No. Sneak attack. Double debilitation. Hmm. Focusing attack confused. Proved evasion. Uncanny dodge. Cannot be caught flat footed. Slow reactions. Uh, improved uncanny dodge. Interesting. Okay, double debilitation, select two penalties. The spelling attack. Yeah. She's not going to be using melee. Um, <laughs> I you can add your strength to your persuasion. I am a gnome! You will feel my wrath! Okay. Um... Oh, so we need sneak attack before we can do any of that. And she doesn't have sneak attack right now? Prerequisite sneak attack? Yeah. Let us not show ones that I don't even have yet. That's basically the idea. Okay, what's up, Bone? Alright, so if you if you do that, then we don't have a lot of um, options here. We've got intimidating process, which I'm not going to do. Skill focus. Thinking about this. Yeah, I'm going to get skill focus, and I'm going to get it on trickery. Okay. Lovely. Alright, now spells. Um, let's see. We've got cause fear. Hmm. Expeditious retreat. I know expeditious retreat. Um, increases your base speed. Feather step. Uh, no. Flare burst. Functions as flare. Haze of dreams. Target was a hideous laughter. Okay. Um, hypnotism. Ooh, that's possible. Summon monster. Summons an extra planar dog. Ooh. That's pretty impressive. Um, don't I already have cure light wounds? Oh, those are the ones that it's showing me that I have already. I see. Okay, vanish, unbreakable heart. Yeah, we're going to do summon monster one. Nice. It is a hot dog. Cute, cute. Kanji, I see what you did there. Okay. And last but certainly not least, my main guy. So he is a ranger, in answer to, I think it was Joe that asked that question. Um, okay, we are going to, 
increase my perception, my persuasion. Um, let's see. Uh, athletics is possible. I like the idea of mobility. I really want to try to get my mobility up in case something comes and attacks me. All right. I already have point blank shot. Rapid shot. Precise shot. Uh, taking a stand. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Precise shot. That was super easy. Lovely. Good. All right. Let's save this. Arv at Olin's. Arv at Oleg's. Awesome. Okay. I am there. Now we can find out what the heck is... <coughs> we can find out what the heck is going on. Okay. We'll collect all that stuff. Gate hinges are deformed and the deadbolt is broken. It seems someone didn't want this gate to close. Alright. Time to find out what the heck was going on here. All right, Oleg. Explain what happened. Take that, you scoundrels! But now... The girl got away a plague on her. She's certain to complain to the stag lord. They came before to collect taxes, but this time they'll come to punish treason. Now what are we to do? If only I could send Svetlana somewhere safe and show these rats what's what. Dove, why are you here? I told you to stay hidden. It's all over. I saw it. I just needed to be sure you were all right. My name is Svetlana. I'm sorry your arrival to our trading post turned out so unwelcoming. Let's see. I saw someone run out of the trading post. Do you know who it was? That must have been Balkan. He sells potions. He lives out in the forest like a hermit, but he comes here every day. He knows every tree and bush in the area and how they can help you. The Stag Lord's gang wants him to work for them. He lacks the courage to fight those bandits, but he won't just walk away from us. He has a good heart, even if he grumbles a lot, especially recently. Tell me more about yourselves. Surely there are more important things to discuss. Well, all right. We're just honest people who came here from Restoff. We fixed up the old fort to house travelers and give merchants a place to trade with the locals. We also deal with the occasional huntsmen in the area. What does any of this matter? When those bandits come back, they'll either drain us dry or just kill us. Let's see your goods. I know what good trading will serve if those bloodsuckers come back and take everything, but... All right, have a look. Okay. All right. It's time to sell some stuff, people. Okay, dagger. We'll keep the torches. Get rid of that. Heavy mace. Um... Oh, wait. Okay. Get rid of that. 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 Um, let's see. Copper ring. Copper ring. Silver ring. Silver chain. This. Okay, what else have we got? Bloodstone. Okay. Agate. Carved beads. Carved figurine. Carved urn. Citrine. Alright, decorated scabbard. Rusty horseshoe. In case any of you have noticed, we've, uh, we've had a lot of stuff that we've needed to sell for a while. Okay. Incense. Uh, old map of Aviston. Silver disc. Mug. Plate. Short bow. Padded armor. Ooh, bracers of armor. Hey, now. Didn't know that I had that. Club. Padded armor. Dagger. Padded armor. Club. Padded armor. 
Great Axe. I don't think it's that great of a name. Chainmail. Uh, okay. Short Sword. Leather Armor. Short Sword. Leather Armor. Exactly. I could listen, if you want me to defend you, I need to actually like lay this down, okay? That's what I need to do. Okay. Heavy shield plus one. I do not have enough money for that. Wow, this stuff is expensive. Look at this stuff. Alright. There we go. That's a lot easier. Alright. So, no, no, no. Oh, it's Fetlana. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's see. Let's get to the point. You say the. Oh, wait. Before I do that, we'll talk later. Hold on. We'll talk later. I forgot that I have to put on these bracers. Um. The one who really needs these is this person, I think. Well, maybe. No, it doesn't do anything. Because I've already got armor. You see 24. You see 16. Really? Does this really not help anybody? Doesn't stack with armor bonuses from different sources. Okay, so this basically isn't that good then. Hmm. They only work if you have no armor. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was concerned about that. Need another one of those. There we go. Hmm. Okay, I need to get this into... Oh, it doesn't stack? Okay. Alright, I need to make sure that I get some of these things ready because she's going to be taking stuff. Okay, she's already got this stuff, so that's fine. That's fine. Okay, she needs something else. Don't need raised dead, but bless would be nice. There we go. Okay. Now we're good. You forgot the kitchen sink. Okay. Good, good, good. Alright. So, now we are good to go. So, now I save this. Now I talk to her and talk about the bandits. Let's get to the point. You say the bandits are going to attack again? Who are they and when will they arrive? Who are they? Are the Stag Lord's gang. That's who. These lands team with bandits like bedbugs in a beggar's hut, and you just stirred them up. They have a camp not far from here. I expect they'll return in full force in half a day, maybe less. The stag lord won't take an insult like this lightly, and his henchmen are more like demons than men. Let's see. Tell me as much as you know. How many bandits are there? What do they want? What do they want? These bloodsuckers think they own this land. They come, take what they want, and steal the better part of our money every month as a toll for their leader. They even broke our gates so we couldn't try to hide anything from them. No one knows exactly how much they are, how many there are. Sometimes only five or six come. Sometimes it's a whole gang. I'd have shown them for what for long ago, if not for Svetlana. They claim they were collecting taxes. Why? For the Stag Lord and his cronies, of course. That Stag Lord fancies himself a king in these parts. He may have antlers for a crown, but all the troublemakers around here are happy to follow his orders as long as they're paid. So they charge an arm and a leg as taxes, and they call their executions punishment for treason, even those who never swore allegiance to the Stag Lord. They're killed fast if they're lucky. I think I just realized that Arvin Elrond, that's my portrait. So it's not that they all look the same, that was me talking to them. Now I feel better. Um, they're killed fast if they're lucky. If not... Dove, why don't you go start supper while we finish our talk? I've no need to be protected from dark talk. I'm not some blind kitten, you know. Um... I've seen what they do to people. Most of the gang is made up of simple bandits, but there are a few monsters among the leadership, especially those close to Staglord. Ox and Dovin from Nisrock come to mind. They like to make a show of their four tortures and executions. 
My husband and I, we saw the bodies. You have nothing to fear. I'll help you deal with the attack. Well, I appreciate your good intentions. I may not have the best manners, but Oleg Levitin is the last name you'll hear accused of being ungrateful. If we manage to defend this post, I'll reward you proper. We have to hide, Svetlana. Please don't argue, Dove. Now we need to decide on a plan. Go ahead and look around. There may be some tools that can be used for the battle. There's some pretty solid traps around, some tar, and a box of alchemist fire, looks like. Alchemist fire? We could put it by the gate, light it off with a burning arrow when those bandits are nearby. But that could set the post on fire! Well, maybe if we covered the walls with something to protect them. Alright, yes, I think it could work. I'll even shoot the arrow myself. I used to be pretty good with a bow back in my day. Okay, let me look at the tar and traps. Alright, as soon as you're finished, let us know. And don't leave the post. The bandits could return at any time. Alright. Okay, people, let's go take a look. It's oh, it's Boken. A frail, disheveled old man wearing a stained and tattered robe gives you a gloomy look. <coughs> I'm Boken, local herbalist. What brings you here? Tell me about yourself. What's there to tell? I'm an herbalist. Make potions and sell them. Gather herbs, roots, berries. Boken sighs. I live in the forest, live off the land. Since leaving Restov for these parts, I ended up a merchant here at Oleg and Svetlana's post. They let me in out of kindness. Help me with things. They bring me water or firewood when it's cold and the occasional barrel of honey. They're good people. Could use your help fighting the bandits. Where's this coming from? You want an old man like me to fight? Here, take this potion. Consider that my help in your fight. The bandits here bother you as much as Svetlana and Oleg, maybe more. Help us get rid of them for good. Well, all right. I'll show those troublemakers. They'll learn better than to chase an old man around. Someone might even write up some verses about me, maybe even heroic ones. Please be careful. Go ahead and help, but leave the heroics to us, you hear? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> He's gonna go running right at them, and I'll be like, um... Okay. Okay, now, let's go look for traps here. Things that we can use to set up for when the bandits come. got here. Ah, we got loot. Got a heavy crossbow, long sword, and a buckler. Okay. Lindsay, what kind of crossbow do you have? A light crossbow. Hmm. Take a heavy one. Yep, heavy one's better. It's like big as she is. Alright, um... Right. Okay. That shield is yeah, that's called a tower shield. It's uh, specially designed for that. The old well has been renovated and cleaned. It even has a new roof. All right. <laughs> Can you help? Wait. It, hey. I'm there. I don't. Wait. Come back. Don't. It, let, let me help you. Don't. We need help. Help. Fight the bandits. Hey. Okay. Not much in the way of excitement up there. What about over here? Rally the village to fight, end up saving no one. You need to fight for your freedom! Then they're all dead. Uh, what is that over there? Is that a cat? Looks like a cat. Come back, cat. Come back! Alright. I see how it is. Seems to be tar. Spill tar near the trading post entrance to help slow down the bandits. Haha. <laughs> Alright, we'll see how how well things go for them when they're slowed down a little bit. Okay. Silver spoon, five gold coins. I'll certainly help your trading post by robbing it for everything it's worth. I'm just kidding. What the devil is that? Oh, it's a chicken. Chicken help! Check out. <laughs> There's a little chick. Aww. Potatoes. I'll collect those potatoes. Stop stealing their stuff. I'm not stealing their stuff. I'm making tactical decisions of good re redistribution. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, let's do the laundry for 
That's a good idea. Maybe we can uh, convince the bandits that we'll do laundry for them instead of attacking the keep. That's not exactly what I meant, Dad. Perhaps you think you could get everything from us, but what if we did your laundry for you? They'd be like, oh, I don't know. that's a great idea. Wait, uh, and they're like, I'm off. Yeah, tactical acquisitions. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Ah, some good tr steel traps. Use traps to help catch the bandits. Alright, we got tar. We got traps. And you got... Oh. And we got... we Right, and we have an old herbalist. <laughs> Alright. Now I'm ready for bandits. Alright, let's see what happens. Okay, right. Enough about the bandits for now. I'm prepared for the attack. Get in your positions and wait. Fear not! I'll stand between you and this scum. You're under my protection. Finally, a fight. I was bored with all that talking. Well, these aren't the heroics I was hoping to write about, but I guess even the greatest heroes had to start somewhere. Mmm, oh that would be a good idea, I don't know. I see you're not easily cowed. I beg you, be careful. And please don't let Oleg do anything too risky. Svetlana, go hide inside. We're going to go meet our guests. Yeah, yeah right. Here we go. Guests. Our guests. Kobold, give me a What is it? Woo, hop out! Nice. Why, look at this. We're going to have you wait right here, actually. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. Oh, this is working great. So far. Yeah. And now they're kind of getting over there. Okay. So far, so good. Now, Lindsay, I need you to do some work, please. Um. Awesome. Okay. And ear piercing scream. To disable them. Yep. Sure are. This worked pretty much perfectly. Yeah, that is how we do it, people. That's how we do it. How'd that fight go? It's kind of low, but everyone else is fine. Everyone else is doing well. Let's just loot everything that moves. Okay, collect all. The strange thing that... You know what's really strange to me? How, like, she, she's the barbarian, and she usually gets the damage. Yeah, that's right. That, and i got to work on... That's why I wanted to get... I was worried about the attack, but I need to make sure I build up her and, like, health over time. Thank you, Ice Oil. You hate this kind of micromanagement? When it ends badly, I have a feeling it's my fault. No, it's fine, Gusto, see? Nice. All right, that was cool. That worked really well. The only one who really got hurt was her, and she's going to get a chance to rest now. So, and no, and Boken, Boken lived! Boken did not die! <laughs> we saved Boken. Actually, I, what was Boken doing? Was he just sitting there, like... Yeah, you'll get yeah, more yeah, where that I, came I, from. He's actually just sitting there. I actually saw, not sitting, but he was just standing there. I actually saw him do that. Get this what for? Okay, everyone I think is slow because... Oh, heavy encumbrance because we just... Because we, like, picked up all of their armor, so now we can barely move. That's fine, though. I'll take care of that. It wasn't even a battle. They're all just massacred. Yep. Is the alchemist firebombs. Oh, Boken was throwing the grenades. Oh, well, Boken was doing an awesome job. Okay. Boken's breathing heavily, but he shakes his fist in the air menacingly. You, you rats got what you deserved. Now they'll know better than to treat honest people like cattle. And our Boken here taught them a thing or two as well. Yeah, so Boken, it was. Boken didn't, like, run up. He, like, attacked from a distance. That's, that's what I like to see. He's good at hurting your party. Hey, listen, that's all right. He only really damaged Amiri. 
Now, my lord, head on up to the guest rooms on the second floor. You deserve some rest after such a battle. I need to clean things up. And this is for your efforts. Now, don't offend me by trying to turn it down. Just take it. An honest fight deserves an honest reward. If that were more common practice in this world, I think life would be so much better. That's awesome, but actually, Oleg, um, no, I need to sell you. I can't. Can I? Okay. Can I sell this up to you? We sure showed them what's what. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to be encumbered until we actually get through the, uh... Okay. Oh, they're yawning. That's cute. Oh, look, it's cute. Yep. Hey, what's up, Geronimo? How you doing, man? Oh, um... Oh, there's an update available. Darn it. Shoot, there's an update available on Pathfinder Kingmaker. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to do that afterwards. I didn't realize that there was. Um, so, Geronimo, first of all, welcome. And um, I haven't had a chance to write you, but the same thing that... Well, how do I... Hmm. Here, give me, give me a second, chat. I just need to... Seeing Geronimo, I need to tell him something very quickly. Uh, just give me one second. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. No, I'm not going to update it live. Although I'm tempted, but I'm not going to. Because I don't want to, I don't want to slow everything down. I mean, I have a pretty good internet, but still. Oh, is it broken? Okay, cool, I could chill. Thank you. What do you mean broken, though? Okay. All right, I just whispered you something, Geronimo. Okay, there we go. They said on PC only 20% of fixes were included. Yeah, it can always roll back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, spell selection problems when leveling. Okay, if they'll update it in a few hours, then that's fine. That's that's so much the better. I don't need to update it right off then. That's good. Okay, we'll get some more potatoes. Also, some more loot. Okay, Svetlana, how are you? I'm glad it's all over, even if there was a fight. We'll talk tomorrow once I'm finished working. Oh, man. I'm worried that we're going to go to bed and the bandits are going to attack again. Aha, a kitty cat. And a chest. It's just not my lucky day. It's locked, huh? What? Pick it again. Pick it again. Pick it again. Pick it again. Oh. Really? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder when you can, I wonder, like, does anybody know, uh, do you have to wait, like, 8, 12 hours in, in this game to be able to try to re-pick again? Or you have to level the skill to pick it again? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Aha! Summons a pet red panda. Red panda's emotional support provides plus one morale bonus to saving throws. Nice. Head chomper. Oh, that's cool. Oh, da -da -da. That's cool. Um, kill the bandits, become the bandits yourselves. We also have head chomper, a pet owl cat. Plus two mo morale bonus on perception and lore nature checks. Okay. We've got an expert's hat. Which grants its wearer a plus one competence bonus on all skill checks. It's probably going to go to Lindsay. Mesmerizing necklace, uh, DC, cast color spray. Okay, that's going to Lindsay. Ray of Enfeeblement will probably go to Lindsay. And this is just money stuff. Alright. So as far as the skill check is concerned, clearly Lindsay needs this hat. Yeah! Ha ha ha! Indiana Jones, people. Indiana Jones. Oh, this is items based on pre-orders edition of the game? Okay, this is the Imperial edition, so I dig that. Because Fedora, clearly. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, for sure. All right, um, so, plus one morale bonus to saving throws. Um, can you have two pets around at one time? Does anybody know? Can you have two pets at once or not? You can? Alright then, well then. 
tell you exactly what I'm getting. Oh, we don't see them. Oh, because you we uh yeah, you haven't seen them yet because they're not there yet. I haven't summoned them yet. Okay, now this one is a mesmerizing necklace. That should go to Lindsay. Okay. And then Ray of Enfeeblement. I like that idea. Um, range touch attack. Wand of Magic Missile. Hmm. I wish that... Yeah, she can't use that. She can't use that. He can't use that. Alright, well, that's easy. Um... Now we can sort by type. Lovely. Okay. Here we go, people. The time has come for our My panda to arrive. Are absolute. Panda. Yay. Owl cat. Yeah. It literally is an owl cat. It's a cat that's also an owl. Why is he skipping about? I don't know. He's an owl cat. He's probably trying to figure out what kind of animal he is. He literally is an owl that's a cat. Of course, the maker of the game is called Owlcat Games, so I think that's why. Okay. By the way, if anyone is interested in picking up this edition, I believe this is, uh, you can actually get it directly by typing an exclamation point game. You can get the game through me. It doesn't cost anything extra to you, but it throws a couple of extra, uh, dollars my way, which is always appreciated. Thank you, Gross. And if you get the Imperial Edition, you will get, uh, the Panda Bear and the Owlcat. Okay. How do these stick I'm listening. I don't know. Did you just see him roll? Did you see him roll? You see him? He just rolled back and forth. Here, watch. Just watch him. He rolled back and forth. I don't know why his head is in there, but... <laughs> Silly. I want an owl cat, right? Okay. <laughs> mean, yep. Bedtime. You wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. In it, you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. A quick look out of the window, and you find out that the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream. And then... Hear me. Please hear me. Can you hear me? Please. Arvin, can you hear me? <laughs> um, okay. Who are you? Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself. The bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area. A defeated guardian. Call me the Guardian of the Bloom, if you wish. What do you want from me? Aid. Salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Staglord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Staglord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. My forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. The Stag Lord is responsible for the fog? Yes. It hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. While responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid who has betrayed even himself. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. How can I help? <coughs> How can I help you? This fog, it enshrouds, entangles, suffocates. 
If only I could learn how it was created. But my powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house, and it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid were there. The fog hides this place from me, but I can point you to the bandits' camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there and listen to the echo. Catch the whispers. Search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again. And you will be able to easily find your way to the fortress of our mutual enemy. Okay, fair enough. All right, I understand. Farewell. I don't believe in fate, stranger. But our meeting seems more than a coincidence. All right. Gotta go deal with Thornford. Is it your key, Pip? I assume so. There are no threats in this location. It's a sort of headquarters where you can prepare your party for a new expedition. In such locations, companions don't follow you around and will go about their own business. You can speak with them freely to get to know them better. Once you exit this location and return to the global map, you'll be able to choose the companions you wish to take with you, leaving the others here. Whenever you meet a new companion, but don't want to include them in your party right away, that companion will travel to this location on their own. Okay. I assume they're around, like, wandering around and stuff. That was odd. I can't pick locks. Aha! <clears throat> it is... Here we go. Will-O-Wisp, an amusing glowing ball which looks harmless and doesn't arouse any natural suspicion. Prepares to be a guiding, pretends to be a guiding light in the marshes, but leads travelers to certain death. It's like full filet. Full filet, ball, da -da, ball of fire. The agonizing fear of their victims is this monster's nourishing dinner. If you manage to resist their tricks, make sure you have some electrical protection. The monster electrocutes any visitors it fails to lure into terror. Okay. Werewolf. Werewolves prefer, prefer to hunt in groups and attack lone travelers. It's entirely possible that a Varesian camp or troop could turn into a pack of bloodthirsty lycanthropes under cover of darkness. Ordinary weapons stand little chance against them, but a silver blade greatly increases your chances of survival. Okay. And primals. Powerful creatures of the primal realm occasionally visit this world for amusement. It's best to stay out of a primal's way. Don't fight it. It's extremely dangerous, but if a life is at stake, resort to cold steel. Okay. I'm there. I have long searched for something like you. I believe our meeting was no coincidence, since I was searching for you for very long, as I've previously stated. Okay. Svetlana! Good day. I hope you're feeling all right after that battle. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. I definitely don't want to waste your time, but if you have a moment, I have a request. I mostly just want to sell you all the stuff I just took from you. Um, what? I haven't run into that problem yet, Ravalon, but hopefully that won't be the case. I don't know. What did you want to ask me? This is a very personal request and maybe not important enough for your time. I'll completely understand if you say no. But the first time the Stag Lord's thugs came here demanding money, they also took my wedding ring. Just tore it off my hand. It's just a trinket, really, but it meant so much to me. I remember every moment of the day Oleg came to me, that ring in hand, to ask if I'd marry him. I was standing in a fancy dress on the stairs of my father's home, fearing that I'd misheard something, or that I'd say something stupid and everyone around would laugh. If you happen to find my ring among the bandit's possessions, please bring it back to me. It's easy to recognize. My name is engraved inside the band. There is one more thing. Among the bandits, there's a dark-haired woman who wields dual axes. She's not bad in a fight. In fact, she can be extremely dangerous and cruel. But please, I beg you, show her mercy if you have the chance. What? I wonder if that's her daughter or something. I'd be happy to help, Svetlana. I'm so, so grateful for your help. Okay, prove it by buying my stuff. Oh. Tell me about yourself. How did you and your husband find the courage to establish a trading post in the Stolen Lands? It was Oleg's idea, though I supported him in it. 
We didn't realize how dangerous it was here, of course. In Restoff, everyone respects the Sword Lords, and everyone's accustomed to relying on them. Even the mention of someone like Lady Jamondi could be enough to fend off a street thug or some other trouble. It could maybe even work in some places here, but not with the Stag Lords men. Oh. Well, we'll find out, Ravalon. I know that they just patched, um, did a patch that I was uh, looking at, but I want to wait just a little bit because they said they have some adjustments they have to make in the patch. He's not just some average bandit. If no one puts a stop to him, he'll turn the Stolen Lands into his personal kingdom, a kingdom of fear and oppression. Hmm. I like adventures, but I definitely prefer the ones that involve stopping villains and helping people. Can't thank you enough for the hope you've given me. But please be careful. The Stag Lord is extremely dangerous. I have to go. Farewell! Recover Svetlana Levitin's wedding ring from the bandits and return it to her. Okay, I will do it. I will do that. Just as soon as I figure out who I can sell stuff to. <sighs> Lindsay, you have anything to say? <clears throat> Just a moment. How should I put this? Oh, I know. Oh, hi. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? Where are you from? I'm from all over. <laughs> I was actually born in Galt. A nation of free thinkers and radicals renowned for British poet, brilliant poets, artists, and philosophers whose ideas shaped the politics of the whole of Aviston. Galt was once a vassal nation of Cheliacs. After the death of Aridin and the rise of House Thrun and Cheliacs, the people of Galt decided to throw off their foreign rulers along with their own nobles who had colluded with them. The executions did not end the bloodshed, and within five years, the severed heads of the ministers of the first government rolled down the steps of the guillotine. In the forty years since, over a dozen governments have ruled Galt, rising and falling like the waves of a stormy sea. But I was in such a tiny village, it's not even on the maps. If it weren't for my teacher, I'd still be living there, milking goats, weeding turnips, swilling homebrew, having babies, and using books only as kindling. Who was your teacher? He's a true saint. He was once an important person in the capital at the Church of Shellen. Yeah, well, this is patch 1.04, though, Ravelin. But he got in trouble with the authorities and went on a self-imposed exile to the tiniest, most godforsaken, priestless village he could find. The one where I was born. He wanted to open a school, but the villagers wouldn't let him. You can heal us all you like, but no putting any ideas into our children's heads. It'll only distract them from their work. But he did teach me on the sly. He taught me how to read, how to write, and he gave me books, poems, legends. He was the one who told me about the Arch Knights of Avistan. And when I told him I was going on a journey, he gave me a magic ring so that Shellen would protect me from harm. Hmm. I haven't seen him since I ran away from home. I hope he's all right. I ask Shellen every day to grant him a long life and new students. Archknights of Avistan. Who are they? Oh, you haven't heard of them? How can you be a hero without knowing one of the most epic story in the history of stories? They... No, I, I won't spoil anything. You should just read about them yourself, every single chapter. Their adventures are what gave me the idea of going on a heroic quest and writing about it to begin with. And now, look at me, here I am, on a heroic quest with an awesome new hat. <laughs> How did you become a bard? When I realized there was nothing for me at home besides more radish patches, I decided to run away. A traveling book peddler, Tessie the Quill, happened across our village. Well, I stuck to her like a burr and wouldn't let go until she agreed to take me as an apprentice. Together we traveled everywhere, to Bravoy and Taldor and even Ustalaf. And then I found out about the Academy of Grand Arts in Pitax. Academy of Grand Arts. Some, uh, not as popular as some of the great bardic schools of the Inner Sea, Pitax's Academy of Grand Arts still manages to attract some students seeking greater specialization. And I thought, well, I love reading stories, so I can surely learn to write them too. I enrolled on my first try, and they even gave me a scholarship. Then they expelled me. <laughs> but that's okay. They'd already taught me all the important stuff. Expelled? Means kicked out of the school. I don't know. Hopefully they'll, she'll find out later on. They'd already taught me all the important stuff. And now, with Shellen's help, I can manage on my own. Do you worship Shellen? Yes. Well, not to offend the other gods, but she's the most important of them all. All the other gods guard the word as it is. But only the Eternal Rose, the goddess of beauty, calls us to the world as it should be. Why are your clothes so messy? Ah, forget it. I can't waste money on looks. I'd rather buy books instead. In a hundred years, when people are reading my works, they aren't going to ask whether the author had holes in her sleeves. That's fair enough. You come from Pitax, right? Tell me about it. Oh, I love Pitax, even though they kicked me out. A joyful place. What is life in Pitax like? Actually, Pitax has always been one huge nest of thieves. That's why I love it. I love thieves. No. 
Bandits, river pirates, smugglers, fences, card sharps. It's always been home for the likes of them. But that was before Irovedi became king. With him, a whole different life began there. Irovedi always wanted to make history, but not as another bandit with a crown, though that's exactly what he is. <laughs> he wanted to be glorified through the centuries as a great patron of the arts. So he built the Academy of Grand Arts and spent lots of gold to assemble the best artists, poets, and musicians. Of course, the very best ones refused to go, but he got what he wanted in a way. If Pitax was once just a booze barn for thieves, now it's a cabaret. What do you know of King Irovedi? He won his crown in a game of cards, which says as much about Pitax as it does about him. He's fiendishly clever. Some cheats I know told me that from the moment he appeared, he started to pulling off such schemes that the old city masters just scratched their heads. With him in charge, gold flooded into Pitax. And also, he's incredibly, unimaginably, fantastically decadent and conceited. Getting drunk with women at the pub, that's not Lord Irovetti style, oh no, he aims higher. Dressing up like a male Callistria with a golden codpiece, known as the savored sting and the unquenchable fire, the goddess of lust and revenge who takes on many desires, many faces and guises, held in especially high regard by elves who often identify with her mercurial moods and changeable nature. And holding a three-week orgy with dancing on the rooftops, parades, public executions, and a contest for the best ode to the great unrivaled king, that's more like it. He also likes singing, ugh, and he orders his guards to make the citizens gather for his shows. May Shellen have mercy on his listeners. Tell me about the academy you studied at. You know, jokes aside, I'm thankful to Irovetti for building it, but he has no taste at all, whatsoever. He likes his art loud, bright, grandiose, and most importantly, glorifying his royal highness. He kicked out the best charcoal artist because he didn't wish to spend money on gray scribbles. He's basically President Donald Trump. I'm oh, sorry. He sacked a masterful flute player from Tianjia for playing too quietly, and instead ordered them to open a kettle drum class. He even, even ordered the academy to expel me. And for what? An innocent limerick. Oh, that's why she got expelled. A poem. What? Some poem. Would you like to... I don't know. We'll find out. Would you like to go back to the academy and finish your studies? I'd like to return, but on one condition. If they threw out three quarters of the professors who teach there now and returned all the ones they banished. If you ask me, I'm proud to have been expelled. If my art was to Irovetti's liking, then I would have reason to be ashamed. As long as mediocre lickspittles sit at the academy and those with real talent beg on the streets of Pitax, I will not cross the threshold of that place. Okay. Tell me about that book you're writing. What is there to tell? You've seen some of my rough drafts already, haven't you? It's a book about you and your adventures. I'm writing the whole truth, just as it happened. Well, the whole artistic truth. You know, no glory, no story. So, what kind of a character am I? Truth be told, I was a little afraid of meeting a real hero. In books, they're all protectors of the weak and poor, but what about in real life? But you eased all my fears with two shakes of a tail. You're a true hero, just like in the legends. My new fear is that in a hundred years, my readers will say that people like you never existed. But I'm writing the truth. Sometimes you follow the rules, and sometimes you make up your own. Your actions are hard to predict. It's what makes you so interesting to read about. There once was a King Irovetti, whose hair was like greasy spaghetti. He made a new school, and thought he looked cool, but he was still Bandit Irovetti. Where? There you go, Aaron Where is that? Oh, well, I made up the second half. Aaron Donnell made the first half. Um, why are you writing it? What's the point? When I was at the Academy, Eobald the Insightful began his literature course with the question, What is a person? I always begin my classes the same way. What is a person? <coughs> Every day I come down and I say to my daughter before she goes to school, What is a person? No. Nope. No. I never said that. And he answers. And then I say, Never admit that, you, that I said this. Nope. And he answered, A person is a storytelling animal. Our world does not consist of things, all these woods, seas, and cities. It consists of stories about those things. The stories we tell to ourselves and to each other. Just think about it. This is pretty much, by the way, Lindsay's like the patron, is like the spirit animal of Pen and Pixels. Pretty much straight up. If you want to know Pen and Pixels, this is it. The stories. It's about stories, people. Centuries will pass and there will be no me and no you. All your subjects will be long gone. But you and I will live on in people's memories and influence their deeds, thanks to this very book. How do you feel about me reading your work in progress? Well, these are only drafts, but of course you're welcome to read them. Just keep in mind that even if you don't like what I write about, I won't change a single letter, so don't even ask. Yeah, we need to talk about you taking feedback from editors because... Okay. Of course it's a book about you, but it's my book. Understood? The small writer's eyes glow rebelliously. 
Um, hmm. Chaotic evil. Now, what happens to writers who displease their rulers? I'd rather say it on my biography. Turns out, no interest in censorship. Remember for my deeds, not for your book. Write whatever you wish, it's your right. Nah, that's fine. Write whatever you wish. I doubt you would defame me or, for that matter, overpraise. Thank you for your trust. I'd like to see more neutral goods, but... I will not set out to please you, of course, but I still hope that you'll like my book as much as my other readers. Okay. Tell me about your friendship with Tessie the Quill. What's there to say? The books woke my urge to travel, but it was only thanks to Tessie that I managed to really get out of my village. At first, Tessie tried in vain to get rid of me, but later when I told her I was staying in Pitak, she even shed a tear. I wonder where she is now. What's the deal with the ring you always wear on your finger? Ah, this. It was a gift to me from my first teacher. It's magical, imbued by the powers of Shellen, no less. When I get myself in trouble, it transports me to a safe spot. So please don't be angry with me if I suddenly disappear from a fight. I'll wait for you here, promise. Leave and do not return. I don't want to ever see you again. No, I'm not going to do that. Just don't leave without me. Of course, I could just write whatever you tell me, but if I wanted to stay cooped up in a dusty room, I'd still be sleeping through lectures at the academy. <laughs> yeah. Some of the adventure pads, though, are pretty good on the basis of story, from my understanding. Wait, Honorial Eight Eyes? Who the heck are you? The elf looks straight at you through the tangled hair falling over her face. Hey, you're an adventurer, right? Seeking your fortune in the stolen lands? You aren't the only one of your kind here. Take my advice. Keep your eyes open and watch your back. Sometimes the ones who call themselves your friends are more dangerous than your enemies. Who are you? <laughs> a Noriel Eight Eyes. Once upon a time I was famous throughout Absalom. For more than 4,000 years, Absalom was the city at the center of the world, a metropolis-sized showcase of the greatest treasures in all Galarian. The city not only holds a key strategic position for both uh, commercial and military endeavors in the, re in the region, but encompasses the site of the ascension of four deities and claims to have been founded by none other than the last Aslanti, the god Arodin. Anoriel Eight Eyes, the Reckless Six. Well, glory passes quickly. A few miserable decades later and no recognizes you on the street anymore. What a shame. Why are your, should be you, called Eight Eyes? Once long ago, I could spot an enemy and pin him to the wall before he could even think of attacking. Some said I had Eight Eyes and looked all around at once. Though it seems I've outlived my nickname. She stretches her arm forward and her palm trembles. I've been drinking so much lately, it's best I don't test my skills too often. Where were you when the trading post was attacked? I was hunting. Got a little lost in the mist, which is the first time that's happened to me. I guess I should go easier on the drink. Don't you imagine I'd be scared of a good fight? If only I'd known I was missing all the action. But I see you've got everything under control. A famous pathfinder here in the middle of nowhere? Why? There you go, Deacon. You want to know how one could exchange the life of a pathfinder for this sorry drunken rat hole? You lose all your friends because of one scumbag and then you'll understand. I was the only one to return from the final campaign of the Reckless Six. And whatever's left of me can't be called a seeker anymore. Here's the story. Our leader, Vermelt, was the best of us. Wise, brave, friends with everyone. One of those friends, Ad Davidian Adrissant, sent him a disturbing letter. He'd stumbled upon mention of some ancient books in the art of necromancy. Secrets like those are best hidden forever. Trust me, I've seen what that kind of magic can do. To make a long story short, these volumes were supposedly hidden in the catacombs of Gallowspire. We decided that the book should be retrieved and kept safe by the society. We gathered in a tavern, discussed the exposition, then proceeded to Ustalav. It was a normal mission, a quick and quiet recovery. But everything turned out to be much more complicated. We barely made it through the Witchgate Forest. All those terrible living trees, undead druids, and their arches of bone. It was a miracle we managed to make it out alive. We'd chosen Red Church to stop at. It was marked on Vermelt's map as a safe enough haven to hole up in and lick our wounds. How oh, I wish that had been true. Vermelt was the first to perish. He was attacked by one of the monsters hiding in the stables. It tossed him about like a feather and threw him down an ancient well. His shout echoed for a long time and I didn't hear the sound of him landing, and then... Enough. I shouldn't have gotten into this. Who am I to stir up others' feelings with all my chatter? We'd better forget about it for now. Maybe I'll tell you more some other time, but not today. I want to know more about the Pathfinder Society. What exactly are you interested in? What's the purpose of the Society? It's a school of adventurers. We search for those who are eager to test their skills, and we educate them and give them ideas about where on Galarian, the planet, they might seek their fortune. They look for forgotten knowledge, secrets, and lost artifacts. They're explorers and pathfinders. 
We're a sort of mutual assistance club for adventure lovers. We exchange, so you're basically a geocacher, is what we're talking about. We exchange experience, share knowledge, and keep careful records in case it proves useful to future expeditions. And also we publish books for thrill seekers and bored urban teenagers from wealthy families. What kind of members does the society have? All sorts of adventures. We have representatives from all races, religions, and beliefs. The Grand Lodge is in Absalom, but there are many smaller lodges throughout Galarian, and the venture, captains, venture captains direct pathfinders to their goals from across all the corners of the world. There are many renowned heroes in the society, and many scoundrels as well, whose service to the society has brought them fame. Who does the society support? You mean, who does it serve? No one in particular. Pathfinders try not to get involved in the quarrels of others. They serve only the spirit of adventure, and sometimes they happen to save the world. However, that doesn't mean there are no black sheep among the Seekers. Would you like to join me? Uh, no, I've got enough things to do already. You'd better manage on your own. What are you doing here? I sit here waiting for adventurers who are in need of help. We may be sitting here in a backwards tavern, but in Absalom I have a lot of friends who are eager to make a few coins. They have brave hearts but shallow pockets. A little gold would be a welcome change for them. I can send them a message and they'll come from Absalom through a portal. If you're interested, just give me a sign and we'll arrange everything right away. Okay, I need fighters. 2,000 gold? Let me think about that. What happened in Renchurch? I have no wish to fill your sleep with nightmares. When you prove that you can stand firm in battle, that you can achieve victory without losing yourself along the ways, along the way, then I will tell you of the horrors that waited us in Renchurch. Okay. All right. 2,000 gold. Wow. But she's... But... 2,000 gold for her to help you? For her to bring us, like, a higher, like, an adventurer. But she says she's been drunk. Yeah. But I guess it's not her that would be going. It's the people that she'd contact. Uh. Oleg! Hey. Greetings! You certainly ruffled those villains' feathers. Well, anyway, new day, new troubles. Have you seen the fog? Never seen anything like it before. The road to Restoff looks like someone spilled milk and it just hung in the air. I couldn't see anything through that soup, not even with a torch. Feels like witchcraft to me. I'd bet the stag lord's involved somehow. Rumors say he deals with all kinds of bad magic. Okay. Why would you open a trading post here, Oleg? I just dislike the noise. I'm from Restoff. Cities are complicated. Lots of people, and each with their place on the shelf. Bow before this one, fear this other. Don't do business with a third. Be sure to be extra nice to the fourth. Then villages are a little better. Everyone likes to stick their noses into each other's business. I just wanted a place where I could be my own master. And so I ended up here. I need to take care of the stag lord. Do you know of anything that could help me find him? That's quite a task you've set yourself on. The stag lord is a fortress somewhere in the area, but only a few chosen from the most trusted of his rabble are ever invited. The location of the fortress is a heavily guarded secret. And with this fog hanging around, I imagine it would be even harder to find. I suppose you could try to follow the trail of those bandits who attacked the post before. They came from the southwest, from the side of the Thorn River. Thorn River meanders through the northern parts of the Gnarl Marches. Slow, fetid, and teeming with life, the muddy waters flow sluggishly through flooded lands and dense thickets. The locals dare not drink from the Thorn River, and not just because of the filth or the stench. Ravenous beasts lurk in the murky depths, lying in wait and ready at any time to pull their prey from solid ground down to the bottom of the river. Yee. Hey, what's up, Echo? He is asking if you're having fun watching the gameplay, Lil Arf. <laughs> sort of. She wants me to get on with it and not just be reading. The fortress might be there, or at least some large camp of theirs where you can find information. Alright, what do you know about the Stag Lord? I just want to get the cross code. Not much. Not like I've sat down and shared a cup of wine with a man, you know. But I think he arrived in the Stolen Lands less than a year ago from what I've heard. But soon as he got here, he took over everything. So I'm not going to be doing that, you know. That's that's the next streamer. I'm not doing cross code. I wrote to Restoff, tried to warn them that the Stag Lord wasn't some typical gang leader, but they didn't listen. The rumors about him are horrible. He'll kill a person if they so much as disagree with him. He never reveals his face. Uh, those who've seen him up close report the same thing. Ugly scars cover every inch of his skin not covered by his clothes. The Stag Lord's past is a mystery. He just arrived one day. He was immediately a power to be reckoned with. I guess the most surprising thing about him is that he has as many followers who admire him as he has minions who obey him out of fear. He's got some inner strength in him, or maybe an inner madness. There are many who seem to follow him because of that madness, like it was some kind of virtue. Oh, I didn't put the GOG alerts up. 
I don't know if that's going to be up there in time. Thank you. Thank you very much, RF232. Thank you for the sub. 32 months in a row. Closing in on, um, let's see, we are already at uh, two years. Closing in on three years of GOG sub uh, subscription support. Thank you very much, RF232. I appreciate it. If we get some DRM free, sorry I didn't have the alert up. I apologize. It's active now. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay. Where was I? Uh, show me your wares, Oleg. Well, nothing too good for such a good person. All right, you got that right. Okay, sell this club, sell this club, sell this club. Um, composite longbow. Where do you get all these longbows and clubs and things? From everybody that I took out. Great. Composite longbow. Composite longbow. These are the torches, I think. Light crossbow, longbow, long sword, short sword, short sword, short sword, short sword, buckler, buckler. Silver ring, cloak of resistance. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna have to put that on in a second. Um, however, in the meantime, silver disc, silver spoon. Soft cheese, cooking, 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 cooking. Pearl, sell that. Onions, incense, sell that. Empty notebook. Okay. Camping supplies and rations. Right, these ones are all the same. Good, lovely. All right. Now we've got 1,591. Why am I still overloaded? Why am I overloaded? Oh, really? Oh, thank you. I didn't know that, RF. That's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why am I overloaded? <coughs> hey, what's up, Fire Snake? Yeah, I was lur I was lurking a little bit, although I was trying not to spoil it, but Thank you, RF, for the hint. Um, and what's up, Fire Snake? Good to see you, man. Okay, um, so why am I overloaded? I don't understand. Why would I be overloaded? I don't think, like, I have that much... I mean, oh, it's um for flies. I had like a little couple of flies around here, but I may not get anything from it. In the camp, it only takes your carrying capacity, not of your team. What do you mean? Oh, so it means it's he feels like he's the one taking all of it. Is that what you mean? He's the one who's actually taking it all. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's weird that they do it that way. Oh, I guess I see, because you don't have your full team yet. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So I'm in good shape then. Um, still show me your wares. Okay. So I've got 1,500 gold. Um, light mace plus one. This stuff is expensive. Ginormous sword. <laughs> It's a ginormous sword. <laughs> okay, she's not going to get something better than that. She's got a Masterwork Bastard Sword. <coughs> Encumbrance is disabled at Oleg's. Okay. How far into this have you gotten, Fire? Whoops, not that. Heavy crossbow. Okay, do we have any... Like a masterwork crossbow. Oh, wait, no, there's a elephant size crossbow. Don't get that. <coughs> there's a masterwork heavy crossbow. <laughs> That's twice as big as she is. Okay. Deal. <coughs> I don't understand what just happened there. 
Okay, let me make sure that that worked properly. Yes, okay, good. There we go. Masterwork heavy crossbow. Lovely! Just 20 hours. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Alright, let's talk to the other people and then let's head out. I'm not doing it, honey. I just said. It's not me, it's another streamer. And yes, they are after I'm done. You just missed the dummy. Nice. How is that dummy not breaking apart? I don't know. That is quite a big sword. You 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 missed. We're gonna talk? Alright, spill it, I'm listening. We're just talking. You don't like it? Dunno. Depends on what we're gonna talk about. If it's about monsters or swords or scars, I approve. That's good. And if you're gonna ask what you gonna, and if you're gonna ask questions like why and what for and how, yeah, something this. Or you got even harder ones. Tell me about yourself. Um, first I'm a barbarian. I'm strong. Um, I grew up in the realm of the Mammoth Lords. A realm of megafauna inhabited by humans almost as savage as the prehistoric beasts surrounding the realm of the Mammoth Lords is a land in Avistan's far north that is home to myriad nomadic tribes of Kelly Barbarians. I left my tribe, the Six Bears, and, uh, I like fights. Exactly, Zarakinsis. What's it like to be a barbarian in the Six Bears tribe? Ha! Our people are big and strong. We can cut a monster in half with one swing. We can walk three days and nights with no rest. Oh. We can eat a whole fried oryx by Krom. I guess we had to do a lot of training. That's right. Uh, why exactly? Not enough so you could beat a dummy. I guess you had to do a lot of training to become as strong as you are. Training? <laughs> no one freaking trained me. The boys of the six bears got the training. All I could do was watch. And you know what? They were still terrible even after all that training because I kicked their butts hard. Animals, bandits, monsters all thought they were stronger than me. Idiots. <laughs> because if you start a fight, you think you can win. You think you're stronger than your enemy. I defeated them all. See the scars on my face? What does the realm of the Mammoth Lord look like? Yeah, we can cut a monster in half in one swing, if we hit it. Exactly. Ooh. We'll have to talk about that. What does the realm of the Mammoth Lords look like? Huge and freezing. No place for weaklings. Tribes herd Oryx herds to survive. Oryx are fast, so tribe follows herd for days just to not die of hunger. If you're weak, you stay behind and die in the snow. Tribe cannot stop. Also, there are giants and mammoths. Sometimes demons come too. Ah, and the mastodons. And the saber-toothed tigers. You would survive, I think. For a few days. <laughs> ah, I'm so funny. Why did you leave your tribe? Because they were something that they shouldn't be. All of them. Men were cowards and scoundrels and women were scared like sheep. Men there think no girl can be a fighter because they're weak. They're afraid a woman can beat them. And females just nod. Go sow hides, cook meat, watch kids. That's what they always say. But I'm a warrior. I won't cook hides and watch meat. I told them so. I went hunting with men. And what did I get? Still the same. You are a woman. You stay home. Even gave me a nickname. The Soft Chieftain. Like a warrior woman was a funny joke. I even went to hunt those frost giants and they're... They're... So I left. Cowards, scoundrels, and sissies they were. That's why. You're quite a good fighter. Quite good, huh? Compared to who? If I was a crappy male, I'd fight better. Is that what you say? Or you say I could be better. Like, go get some training, Amiri, right? I meant exactly what I said. You're quite a good fighter. Don't raise your voice to me ever again. You're very good in a fight. You're an excellent warrior. I've just given you a compliment, that's all. True, I fight good. That's what I do best. Thanks for telling me. Let's talk about something else. Why'd you leave your tribe, and what's the story about the Frost Giant? I told you already, they were something bleak. They treat women like sheep, not fighters. As for giants, I'll tell you later. Someday. Maybe. That's a formidable sword, but it's not just a simple weapon, is it? You bet it's not simple! Check out how big it is! Ugh. She doesn't this, look like she's racing the blade. This sword belonged to a real blasted frost giant. That's true. I killed the beast and took this looker for myself. Fits me perfect. My darn trophy! Uh, okay, pack your things and leave. Thanks for talking to me. Talking, talking. Why don't we do some monster killing instead? Right Watch this! Ha! See how I hit it? See, I hit it twice. 
keep watching. I'm gonna do it again. Oh, okay, never mind. Don't watch anymore. Dog! That's a big dog. Hurry, quick! Exactly. Alright, we need to find Valerie and then we can leave. Where is Valerie? Ah, there's Valerie. Of course, keeping lookout on the lands beyond. What's up, Valerie? Greetings. Everything is well, I hope. I'm ready for new orders. Tell me about yourself. What exactly would you like to know? I was they born to a noble... <laughs> well, because they don't know. I was born to a noble family, though I didn't remain long on the family estate. My father sent me to the Order of the Eternal Rose, but I left once I realized that it didn't match my principles. Where are you from? What was your childhood like? I was born in Bravoy, but in fact I've never seen much of the country. I spent my childhood on a remote estate owned by my noble family. Maybe she can't handle it when it's not moving, Aradonel, like it throws her off somehow. My family is a respectable philanthropist and benefactor of the Church of Shellen. Um, actually, you know what I just noticed? Yes, you are. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, this is not the right tags, I don't think. Well, maybe it is. I just noticed that it had me listed as being a UK streamer, and I'm like, um, not the case. Okay. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway. My father is a respectable philanthropist and benefactor of the Church of Shellen. Yeah, where did she get Gut Sword? I know, right? What's up, Likey? He's also a renowned private collector and a great admirer of the arts. My mother saw to my education personally. From my early years, I learned good manners, how to behave at the dinner table, and the proper form of words for every occasion. I also learned the difference between true nobles and low-born upstarts, and I learned how to treat each of them properly. Our home is always under the protection of several paladins of Shellen. My father has donated a handsome sum to their order. One of them, a man of venerable age with a gray beard, once let me touch his shining armor. I still remember the admiration I felt when I touched the cold, polished steel. Of all the memories of my childhood, that one is somehow the warmest one. Yeah, exactly. Why were you sent to the Paladin Order of the Eternal Rose? As you can imagine, from my first days I was surrounded by crowds of servants and nannies who never stopped praising my heavenly beauty. The Paladins of Shellen who used to visit our house echoed those praises. In the end, general consensus overwhelmed my father's better judgment. When I turned six, I was brought to the Church of Shellen and told that this would be my new home. Don't pity me, though, I beg of you. Many who hear this story immediately assume that my parents were cruel and had no love for their child. My parents had respect for me. They taught me something that supported all of my life, a sense of self-esteem. Besides, they didn't abandon me. Once every six months, they would come and visit me at the Order of the Eternal Rose. We had some tea and then had an hour... Okay. All right, then. We had some tea and then had an hour to walk around the garden. Then they would take their leave as etiquette demanded. What do they teach you in the order? Bye, baby. Make sure to close behind you, okay? Oh, all right. It's okay. Okay. Um, a variety of things. Some of them appealed to me, others I simply couldn't accept. I enjoyed the physical activities and swordsmanship, but the arts, calligraphy, painting, poetry... So many, uh, uh, those, so many other ways to waste one's time. I guess that deep in my heart I always knew I'd never be a true paladin of Shellen. Wielding a sword always felt more natural to me than handling a paintbrush. Why did you leave the Order? Because of my heavenly beauty, Valerie winces in contempt. According to Shellen's laws, all art is sacred, whatever form it takes. Severe punishment awaits those who dare harm a painting, a sculpture, or a poem, no matter how worthless the drivel might be. Yeah, exactly, Grows. Jeez. This is, you're killing me, Smalls. My looks always attracted unwanted attention from the pilgrims and acolytes at the temple. I received my first poem dedicated to me when I was nine. The author was some wealthy geezer, and that was only the beginning. Sculptures, pictures, poems, I was drowning in them. My admirers mobbed me, and I had to respectfully accept all their garbage. 
The clerics of the temple were magnanimous, for my suitors made generous offerings to the church. But once, one time, I just snapped. Some wealthy idiot dedicated an extremely untalented poem to me, and he had the nerve to read it right to my face, holding my sleeve. The hour was late, and I was on my way to get some rest after a boring lesson on rhymes. I lost control and tore the poem apart right in front of him. The paladins wanted to impose some punishment upon me. I don't remember which one exactly. They wanted me to repent. Instead, I just gathered my things and left. What did you do after you... I bet your beauty inspired many people in the order. And here I'd hope to avoid the question. Well, let's get this over with once and for all. You should understand that I'm perfectly aware that most races, orders, and genders find me physically attractive. It's beyond my power to change that. But I've never given a potential admirer any reason to start a conversation with me. But it doesn't stop them. After leaving the order, I took a dagger and cut off the long hair they used to praise. Well, now I get letters praising the beauty of my eyes. It was because of my appearance that I ended up in the Order of the Eternal Rose, though I never wanted to be a paladin. It was because of my beauty that an infinite number of suitors have pursued me, all of them confusing simple politeness with hints of affection. But do you know what I really want? Well, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. You tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I want to, I want to, I want to. I want to zig a ziga. I want people to stop treating me like a piece of art. I want them to notice that I'm a person. That I'm... <laughs> what's up, Lord? That I'm capable of something more than smiling for paintings where I sit wearing a lacy satin dress, holding a basket of peaches in my lap. Is that too much to ask? Hmm. Thank you for your honesty. I understand you very well. You're a true friend who I can trust with my life. I am truly happy that you understand me. Thank you. What did you do after you left the Order? I set off for Restoff. I wanted to get as far away as possible from Shellen and the destiny everyone seems so ready to force upon me. Hey, what's up, Elias? Hey, G-Pudding, what's going on, man? Besides, the School of Swordsmanship and Restoff has quite a decent reputation. Honestly, I was hoping for an opportunity to learn from the famous Aldori Masters. Eventually, it became clear that their technique wasn't a good fight fit for me. They teach to avoid impact, whereas I prefer to raise my shield. But my abilities and skills, which I learned at the Order of the Eternal Rose, were enough to make the Sword Lords take an interest in me. They offered me a chance to join the mercenaries who served the Sword Lords, and I accepted. Tell me about the way of Shellen, about her paladins. She's a goddess of love, beauty, and art. Shellen is the one I think that Lindsay uh, worships also. Her paladins are something like armored artists. That's how they like to think of themselves, at least. They're fanatical defenders of worthless, inartistic paintings and meaningless opuses, if you care to know my opinion. You speech of Shellen with such contempt. What did the goddess of beauty do to earn your anger? She's been trying to ruin my life. Shellen, the goddess of everything useless that ever existed in this life. All the beauty in the world, all the art, all the soulful sighs in the moonlight. will never feed a single family. And I beg you to restrain yourself from offering your own opinion. Trust me, I've heard everything you can tell me more than once. Nothing and nobody can change my mind. As for Shellen, she's the goddess of idlers. I almost joined her preposterous entourage. I'm just glad I was smart enough to denounce her while I still could. I understand that not every piece of art is good or even decent, but surely there must be at least a few great works among them. Is that what you think? Many share that delusion. I was deluded too for a while. Now I consider all works of art useless. Oh, Valerie, Valerie, Valerie. Oh, all works of art useless, huh? Mm. Oh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Ah. People create this garbage because they have nothing better to do. The peasant doesn't paint a picture. He plows the earth to feed his family. The soldier has no time for sculpture. He must defend his homeland. But idlers and slackers have plenty of time to waste, so they smear canvases with paint and imagine they've done something worthy and valuable. Because the important thing to do is to make sure you keep your head down and die in squalor and misery, not actually set up some kind of ideal that everyone can strive for, something that gives them a sense of hope, something to inspire them, instead of just beating their heads against the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me. Blah! Um, what do paladins of Shellen usually do? They wander around seeking the next pile of garbage, and when they find it, they call it an immortal piece of art and admire it until they're blue in the face. You might not believe this, but the paladins of Shellen aren't allowed to slay their enemies if they beg for mercy. Can you guess why? 
because a bandit, rapist, or murderer has been put to the sword will never be able to create something beautiful in the future. So a paladin overpowers her enemy in battle then inspires him to create a masterpiece. Might sound hilarious if it weren't true. Plus, all of Shellen's followers are obliged to practice some sort of art in his or her free time. Every single day, no matter what else is going on, even if you're feeling sick or hungry or sleepy. Otherwise, according to their clerics, you lose your connection with your goddess. A preposterous notion, wouldn't you agree? Maybe I can get her to get back into art. Maybe she was really into needlepoint, you know? Or maybe she's into, like, metalwork sculpture. Maybe I can just get her to do a bunch of stuff for Burning Man, you know? I know, right, Sorcerer Dave? You said that every paladin must practice some kind of art. What kind of art did you pursue? Ah, uh, that. I used to, um, embroider. And I still do from time to time. It's nothing, I assure you. Just a simple task to keep my hands busy and keep the gloomy thoughts at bay. Nothing special. I like the idea that she's embroidered everything in super flowery cursive. Like, everything is this way. <laughs> like, just super, like, you know, like, hey, look at that embroidery. Shut up! Death! Kill you! Talk about something else. So you're an atheist? You don't worry. I couldn't agree more. If I could be frank, all this talk about Shellen makes me want to spit. But my noble upbringing prevents me from performing such an undignified act. So you're an atheist. You don't worship any deity? Right. I need no guidance from above. I have my own good conscience and my leader's orders to live by. Okay, you don't follow etiquette and maintain good manners while speaking to me. is probably not going to go over well. Let's see. I'm aware of that. But I'm sure you understand that I am what I am. That's how I was brought up, first by my parents and then by my mentors in the Order. Besides, I was born to a noble order of family, so I rather enjoy the idea that my manner of speech differs a bit from the common language of the peasantry. You can't just can't imagine how many social climbers have bowed politely the moment I opened my mouth. Guess you have plenty of suitors is not going to go over well, really quite beautiful also. You're so eager to follow my orders, why? What do you mean, why? I follow your orders, I've joined your campaign because I have faith in you. I believe your intentions to be noble, though things may not always turn out as you've planned. You are my commander. Your orders are law. It's my duty to follow them. Okay, I order you to acknowledge that you're attractive. No. Well, so long as you don't order me to do something that's absolutely dishonorable, but that would never happen, I hope. Okay. Okay, now we know my now we know what my crew is like. Okay, now we're good to go. In due time. <laughs> Yay, panda. Okay. Okay, let's save that. Rewrite existing save. Wait a second. Uh. See, there's some kind of weird bug with this where I tried to delete it and then it saved it. That's the second time it happened. It happened last week, too. I tried to save it a couple times. It doesn't do anything. I delete it, and it saves instead. I don't know whether that's picked up in a patch. It's not a big deal, because I obviously I figured it out, but that's a little problematic. Hey, Boken. Ha! Old Boken still knows a few tricks to impress those blood-sucking dummies. Enough hiding in the damn bushes, I say. Can I help you in any way? Well, since you're asking, there's a cave nearby. I used to pick berries in there, but the place has been overrun by spiders. Thank you, Fire Snake. I'm, I'm glad that my art is not... I'm glad you don't think my art is useless. I'm glad some people do. It's good to know. True, Sorcerer Dave. The berries are red, look a lot like raspberries. Fang berries, I call them. I'd be real grateful if you gathered a basket of them and brought them back. Just be quick if you do, they spoil quickly. Alright, we can go to this cave. I also need a bucket of moon radishes. They're a rare and mysterious plant. I don't know where to find them, but I know that kobolds gather them and value them highly. It's not a huge deal, really. I'd do it myself if I were younger. But if you're willing, I'll pay you. Three potions for the berries and a purse full of coins for the radishes. Why do you need these? You want to know, huh? Well, I'll gladly tell you after you bring some to me. Okay, I'll try to help. What do you do here? I'm an herbalist, right? Okay, show me what you have. Potions and scrolls. 
Wand of Snowball and Wand of Mage Armor. Hmm. Honey. Mushrooms. Bunch of potions. I think we're actually okay on the potions. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So we'll have to deal with that. Alright, I think we're good to go. So. See, and then it saves it instead. It's so weird. Anyway. Like I say, not a big deal. Okay, let's let's kick it all the way live. Let's move out. Time to go to a cave and take down some spiders, people. All the way live. Hashtag. You cannot travel. Your inventory's weight is too great. What? How is my inventory's weight too great? Exactly. How is that possible? Oh my god, what? Look at this! How is that too much weight? I have two torches, a rope, some bracers, some potions, a few books. Like, how is this too great? You can't carry all this stuff alone. I'm not! I've got a whole team! I got my whole crew, you see? Well, I don't understand. Well, I have this whole crew of people. I didn't... No, 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 no. I didn't, PKD fan. It automatically takes them away. You only get your companions back when you leave. So I try to leave. I didn't take anyone out of the party. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. This is... Oh, wait. So that... This is my group, you mean? So that... You mean that that removes them? Okay. Okay. I get it. So this is my default group is what you're saying. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, good. Woo! I was a little... Alright, I got it. I was really confused. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. If your kingdom is destroyed, the game will be over. Okay. That sword is ridiculous, by the way. Okay, so... Fangberry Cave. All right, now I'm I was really confused. I'm like that's not that much. Okay, that makes sense. Ooh, what do we what do we hear? A jittery old man in squalid clothing shuffles up to you. His gray hair is unkempt and he continually clenches and unclenches his wrinkled freckled hands. When he stops and looks up at you, his eyes widen and he tugs at his beard. Strange weather. Invisible fog creeping out of the woods, soars beyond the sky, obscures the sun and moon. Strange. The old man shakes his head, his eyes shifting about seemingly at random. I don't like this old man. Looks like the kind who can cast the evil eye. Who are you? Remus. But that won't help with the fog. Remus, meaning you're a werewolf? What are you doing here? I do nothing. Breathe, walk, observe. Fog looks visible enough to me. I see more than ever. I've never seen so much before. But someone must look. Thank you for the follow, Robgar. And no one else can. Invisible fog? Does, does that mean you can find your way through it? The fog is... wrong. It hinders your legs, not your sight. I wish not to try. Should probably go. You hasten? You should. Your arrival wastes no time. He races, but in another direction. He searches for power. He'll find it. My rival? Do you mean Tartuccio? He's not tall, but he wants to climb high. Beside him are those who could stand against him, and might yet still. What power is he searching for? Someone else's? Old but forever young, that which was taken from another, that which gave joy, and now gives death. Can you tell me where he is now? He's in an old tomb, south of the trading post. Thank you. 
How do you know we're rivals? I don't know. I see. You can choose where you set your eyes, usually. But can you choose what they see? Okay, farewell. Once stolen, the land should be reclaimed. Once reclaimed, binded with the claimer shall it be. Binded, merged, joined by unbreakable ties. Claiming the land, claiming its pain, claiming its death. Alright. That gave us some good clues. Thank you, uh, L1Con17. Welcome to uh, GOG.com. Thank you for following. Um, okay, so we're going to follow. We're going to save here. So, um, this is a good moment to actually say hi to everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, also, I don't know why he's up here when I want him back here so that the formation can be like this. Much better. Um, so, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, my name is Arvin Elrond. This is Pen and Pixels, episode 145, the show we do here every Tuesday from 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern, focusing on story and narrative and games. This is day two of Pathfinder Kingmaker. I'm going to be doing a full series of this, um, and uh, I hope you like what you see. I focus on story and narrative because I'm an author myself, so a lot of different writing that I've, uh, that I've got out there, uh, especially in the speculative fiction realm. Um, after I'm done in about um, 50 minutes or so, uh, I'll be giving away for Alex, who will be doing the game CrossCode, which I've also played some with my voice team. That's a lot of fun. So you should stick around for that. If you like what you see, please follow. Please make sure to sub to uh, GOG and get those awesome emotes and support the channel. It's our 10-year anniversary, by the way, um, so that's pretty awesome. And, uh, oh, in fact, actually, now that I think of it, I don't think I actually put that up there, so let me... Let me do that. Uh, yeah, there we go. I never put that up there. Ten years of GOG. So I'm going to put that up there. Ten years of GOG. Ten year anniversary. So as I don't write spiders as the main character, will be good. Not every day. No, the full series will be uh, every Tuesday. So every Tuesday during my show, I will do this. The only exception to that will be when I do D&D uh, &D with GOG, because once a month, as you folks know, I play Dungeons & Dragons on here with Pyron Jade, Tasty Chai, Darksaber 2K, and Screaming Joypad. So we'll be doing that. But other than that, I'll be playing Pathfinder Kingmaker. And when that's finished, then I'll be going back to Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, so, but I also have a bunch of stuff going on on my channel. I play a lot of tabletop role-playing games. I'm finishing up Lone Wolf HD Remastered, then I'm going to be doing some Bard's Tale 4 over on my channel, which I know Kilgore's been doing on here, so definitely, um, check all that stuff out, and thank you for being here. Okay. Hello, older than you. Yeah, I know. I know, Fossil. I know. I'm sure it will, but I'll get there eventually. Fangbury Cave. D&D. G-O-G. G-O-G and D&D. I have to say again, I really like how clean the graphics are in this. I mean, lots of nice little details, but just really, really nice stuff. The snakes, the birds, I really like it so far. Also, quick note. Thank you for using a legitimate color palette. I am so tired of games that try to pretend that they're super awesome and edgy by making everything be various shades of gray. It is so nice to see, and, and like, let's mute the palette to no one's business. I really like how nice and, like, it just, it's gotta, it's just nice to look at. Ooh, it's like a centipede. That's awesome. Yeah. Definitely makes a difference. By the way, quick note here. Yeah, medium, yeah. That's, that makes sense. Yes. Monitor lizard. In due time. Okay. I am never wrong. This will hurt. Blood for Gorum! Okay. Color spray. We'll wait on that. Good. Okay. Now, I would like you to continue to you attack that. Run. Actually, I'd like all of you to attack that. Strike. And I would like you to 
thinking about summoning a monster, but for right now, let's just have Demoralize. I'll survive. I always survive. Oh, damn. Okay. That's Tear bad. Okay, uh, Lindsay, I need you to summon a monster pronto. <laughs> Cure wounds, please. Nice. Woo! Right, exactly, Ardenel. Okay. So, that's good. Um, Amiri being that hurt is not so good. Um, so, we'll see. Thank you to, to Frastra. Alright, we need to... I'm listening. Okay. Yeah, I need to up her AC for sure. Definitely need to do that. Okay, one. I do have a lot of healing potions, but I mean they don't grow on trees or anything. I also could try to rest out here, I suppose, but I don't want to waste tons and tons of time because I know that that the timer is continuing to go. Uh, and in fact, right now we've got stolen land. So I have 85 days and 22 hours. Still doing okay with that. Bit arrival. That's not timed. Got to get the wedding ring for the bandits. I'm gathering fangberry. Okay, so. Sounds good. Thanks, Fire Snake. Uh, definitely follow Fire Snake, by the way, you guys. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, he plays a uh, number of games. Uh, we have similar tastes, I think, uh, in some ways as well. Um, as far as backseating, I would rather not, unless it's something that's like a specific tactical tip of something... Um, or if I ask for it. Obviously, if I ask for it, then then you should definitely... Then I would certainly appreciate that, um, but... Silver embroidered purse, silver inkwell, and gold coins. Nice. There. Okay, just making sure that I didn't miss anything here. It's so cool. I love. Look at the way the grass moves with this. Look at that. The snakes go through and it moves the grass around them. Or these centipedes. That's really neat. Okay, and there's the cave. Here. I feel like I want to be in a little bit. I'm listening. All right. Hopefully that'll do for now. I okay. do what I must. Yeah, that's my that's my two year old. He is very very audible. <laughs> Look at the shadow effects. Super cool. Really neat. Okay. Pause where? Oh, spider. I'm off. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I agree, Astro Tom. Alright. And Lindsay was called for it. I'm going to I wanna bless. We need some blessings here. 
Okay. Uh, I don't need that. I don't need that. Where's my potion of bark skin? Give that to you. Oh, wait. How long does this last? 10 minutes per level? Okay. Okay, we're going to use that bark skin. Um, we're not going to use alchemist fire. Use shield of faith. We're going to do that on her. Okay. And scroll of bless. All right, so here we go. Um, Anything is possible. First of I all, I am yours to command. Bark skin. What troubles you? Feel the faith. Here I am. What exactly? Letting the ink dry. The hell was this? Oh, it failed. Oh. Excuse you. Use it. Darn it. There we go. Okay. I'm on. I'm on. Carry the one. Okay. I am your shield. All right, and. Good. Okay, so... Alright, now we're prepared for the spiders. Or at least I hope we're prepared. It's time to act! I wrote it like I saw it. No, not you. I'm always ready. This will hurt! Their life ends here. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. On her raging. You should have run. Ooh, a spider swarm. Uh. Ow. Bring it. Uh. This is bad. This is very bad. Hurry up. Okay. These swarms are not cool. Let us strike and well, run. All right. Much longer. Okay. Um, hmm. No, 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 no. Should have brought the main alchemist with me, yeah. Uh, Strike. let's see. I 
don't know whether I'm doing any... I guess I'm kind of doing damage to them. Um... Okay. I can't keep this up much longer. Why are you not? Jeez. Oh man, uh... Okay, um... Yeah, this is, uh... It's a little rough, I gotta be honest. thing is this thing is difficult um this is blowing through my potions like nobody's business um what i'm not understanding is why i can't find my why i can't find the freaking my spell book. I don't understand why I can't find magic missile. Not about inspire courage, but I know she's got one in her Oh, there it is. Darn it. Oh my god, Lindsay, not the time. Any day, I think I killed one of them, maybe. He's just doing zero, 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 zero. Well, I mean, yeah, but I already used it, though. Oh, I do have another acid flask, I guess. Oh my god, what? There's more? What? Wow, goodbye. No, no, I when I selected all of you, I meant it. Can you all get out? I'll survive. I always survive. Uh, Don't hold back. Tear them apart. Ugh. You deserve it. Go down. I. I'll survive. I always survive. I mean, these guys are doing damage the way the spider's not. I survive. I always survive. Uh, 
I... May I suggest another way to use this spell? Okay, so let's reload that. <sighs> um... It's not... It, there's got to be some way to hit those things instead of just doing zero points of damage. There's got to be. There, it can't be the case that there's literally no way to do it. That, that's ridiculous. It can't possibly be the case. There's got to be some AoE thing or like some... Torches will do one damage. Oh, I do have torches. Done with waiting. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, weapon set, please. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the <coughs> like, the bear. I, I don't mind losing to a bear. I kind of am not so crazy about losing to a spider swarm. I mean, honestly. And Lindsay was called forth. I'm always ready. This will hurt! Serves you Ugh. right! Sorry guys, give me one second. All right, let's see. Um, do this area on the way back? Wait, wait, what is this now? Stat room is, but do this area in my room. I just did it later. Huh. Thought I killed that thing. They go down. Still not working. Really love this thing to work. You should have run. Okay. Strike. Longer. All right. Um, let's see. Have you cure moderate wounds? Have you cure light wounds? Okay. All right. Now, um... Song of Courage. Ha! Okay. 
Okay, so... All right, and then this is going to be over here. Wow. This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, and I don't really have, I mean... They're not affected by color spray. I assume they're not affected by days. May I suggest another way to use this spell? Um. Oh, please don't do that. I said, please do that. Thank you. All right. This is a blind playthrough. Yep. Yes, it is. Okay, so that doesn't work. Touch of fatigue doesn't work. Am I doing any damage to them at all? I'm not really. I could have sworn I had an alchemist fire too. I thought I had an alchemist fire somewhere. Oh, I do. Okay. I do have an alchemist fire. All right. Okay, I need to get one on her. They are immune to everything. Spoken like someone who dealt with this before, huh? Is, is that what I'm hearing? Any last wishes? <laughs> wow. Immune to color spray. I don't think the damn magic missile works because... Right, so never mind. Never mind, never mind. Okay, we're not going to do this now. I like this so far, Mario Bros., although that fight was nonsense. But uh, other than that, I've been pretty happy with um, the, this game thus far. But yeah, that's that fight's ridiculous. So, never mind. We will deal with that later. Sorry I can't go get your fang berries because... Because the spider swarms are the one true boss. In due time. Oh, yeah, it's quite dull. That's fine. Yeah, not a big deal. Okay, so let's see. Um. So, forget the errands, forget Bakken stuff. Alright, so I have to examine the ancient tomb. Let's go there and intervene. 
Let's go do that. Um, ancient tomb. Hey, thanks for the subscription, Aridanel. Thank you for subscribing to GOG. Welcome to GOG. Try to avoid them. Ah, have to fight him. No, I know that. I'm I'm fully aware. Yeah, Baldur's Gate is one of my favorites. Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2. I played through pretty much all of them except for Icewind Dale 2. So, yep, I know it well. Tear them apart! Give me some Song of Courage. Let us try his one right. You deserved it. Whoa, hey there, Kobold Alchemist. Any last wishes? You should take it easy over there, big guy. Hey, you're pissing me off now. God damn it. Jerk. Jeez. Alright, let's take a look at this and see what we got. Yeah, that's fine. I'm pretty much in the same position there, uh, Thorg, yeah. I don't mind it. As long as, as you say, as long as I'm able to sort of come back and deal with it later. Um, that's fine. I'm not wild about timed stuff, and I know that that is part of what goes on here, but, you know, it's okay. It's, I will, I will deal. I don't actually need this belt lantern, but for right now, I'll keep it on. Um... All right, it's actually pretty good. All right, so good spot, I think, to be able to rest here. Yeah, that's kind of what it seems like, so. Okay, good, let's do it. Amiri, aren't you cold just wearing those hides? They cover almost nothing. <laughs> Is it ever cold here? You could walk around naked, bouncing your boobs. My homeland, that's where it's cold. Spit freezes before it hits the ground. Okay. Camp camouflage, hearty meal. Does the game offer user module creation tools? I don't think it does as of yet. Um... And I still can't get used to the fact that they're not actually fully rested when they've done this. Always ready. Just letting the ink dry. Okay. I am your shield. Hmm. Keep it like that for now. Okay. Good. All right. So on we go. In due time. On we go. Heading to the tomb to confront Tartuccio. And by the way, I've got about ten more minutes with you folks, um, and then I will be. Um, 
giving way to Alex, who's going to be playing some cross code. So make sure that you stick around for that. I will be back with this game on this channel next week. Um, and I'll be on my channel finishing up uh, Lone Wolf HD Remastered on Friday. And then on Saturday, I'll be there with some Dungeons & Dragons with viewers. Although that schedule's a little bit up in the air, but probably. So if you're interested, um, that's the place to go. Ancient Tomb Time. And yes, GG has some great sales going on because it is our 10th anniversary uh, this year, this uh, right now. So we are having our 10th anniversary sale. Aha, the tomb. And they call it a mine. A mine! What? Okay, that time it actually worked. All right, the save system needs a little work. There we go. Hey. Scroll of Protection from Chaos. Scroll of Summon Monster. Garnet Ring. Silver Spoon. Lovely. This is we'll be dealing with spells, right? With uh, traps and talk. A gnome in gaudy purple seizes your attention. Of course, the scoundrel Tartuccio, who you knew from your time in Restoff. The vile gnome is standing on a small hill, expressing his discontentment in every way he can muster. Let me guess, you're still dawdling. <laughs> Should I make some tea in the meantime? Bake a pie, perhaps? Plant a small garden and harvest some cherries? Perhaps you'd be more comfortable wearing fool's caps and colored trousers. Then at least I'd be able to sell tickets. Come one, come all! Feast your eyes upon the slowest and the most ridiculous buffoons in Golorian! Why hurry? The same end awaits us all. I am so glad I didn't take these people in my party. Hold your tongue, gnome. I can hardly tell your twaddle from the buzzing of a fly. Quickly now. If we don't find that artifact soon, someone else might seize it. Someone who's standing over there watching you right now, you fools! <sighs> Haram, I'd be happy to see you among my companions. Your faith does not oblige you to fall fools and liars like Tartuccio. There is as much vanity in your words as in the words of all who have not seen the wisdom of Grotus. Yet you seem a worthier leader than the arrogant Tartuccio. Perhaps in serving you, I shall open your eyes to the teachings of my faith. Hell yeah! Harem's on my side. I see my magnificent rival will stop at nothing, even at stealing the servants of his enemy. Let us see if your fools are even more useless than mine. Draw your swords and cover my retreat. Yeah! Does it matter? Oh, mercenaries. Okay. This will hurt. Like, oh, can I level him up? Can I level him up in combat? <laughs> so they're like ready, and he's like, but first. I must take this moment to consider my god. I believe I must have this and they're all like, would you get on with it? All right, let me think more carefully. Perhaps law, religion might have something to do with it. And also, my, maybe I can do some other things like this. And what else may I have? Wonderful. Now I can be better than I was. Oh, uh, gosh. Serves you right. Let's get some courage going. Can you cure wounds? Because that'd be really helpful. Oh my god. And will be. Definitely will be. 
Okay, wait. I need to get a peeling potion on you, Brosif. What? Wow, okay. Thank you for the follow on my channel, Dungeoneer 2. Let us strike as one. What exactly is taking so long? Can you get around? Tear them apart! Man. This won't kill me! You should have run! Okay. Alright, um, let's see. Tall halfling, a dwarf. Strike! Outstanding. Uh, okay. This is not going great. Gotta be honest. They go down! I still got it! Okay, um, this is not good. This is definitely not good. I'm writing you out of our story. Good. Now you bastards. Do not oh. hold up. Could this happen? It's not going well. What's up, Zutor? Should have summoned this monster already. Hurry up, hurry up. What a miserable last chapter. Stay behind me. Stay behind me, she says to everyone. <laughs> Woo! Little close, people. What's up, Kilgore? That was a little close. Ben, it's surely a time to disappear and make their tracks. What did they just say about we had time? What was this now? We lost much time tracking the insidious Tartuccio. Bandits attacked. Cover their tracks. Wait, what? I don't understand. So wait, does that mean that I missed a chance to get to Thorn Ford? Is that what that means? Like, I went right to Tartuccio. I don't know what by they mean by we lost a lot of time. So in other words, I should have gone directly to Thorn Ford? Is that the deal? No, that's not what that means. What does that mean? No, but I'm saying, like, did I lose a chance to get the bandits or something? Did I lose a chance to get the bandits or not? Okay, so this isn't like a this isn't like a disastrous screw up. Okay, because I just felt like I would deal with the rival because I ran into the guy who said that this was the thing, and I'm like, okay, well then. Hmm. 
It's meaningless flavor to Okay. Thorn Fjord will remember this. Yes. Yes, indeed they will. Okay. All right. We got to get uh, we got to get moving here, folks, because I am just about out of time. So we will loot this place at another point. Um, so we'll throw that up there like that. We will loot this at another point, but that point is not going to be now. Okay, we've got that like that. Okay, we've got that like that. And then, um, Alchemist Fire. And, okay, and I think the rest of that should be good. Good, lovely. Yes, that Indiana Jones hat is actually a, um, it's an expert's hat, so I get a plus one competence bonus on skill checks. Okay. All right, well, um, I guess, you know, that could have been worse. Uh, somehow. Seemed from far to be but cracks in the scone, but turns out to be a faded image of the sun. A grinning jackal skull has recently been scratched on top of the image. Okay, let me just click this, and then I'm saving it, and then that's it. Scorched fragment of a necklace. Ooh, so you can actually collect fragments of stuff. The fedora? Yeah, and it's a necessary to one, too. Patience. I mean, Harem was always the one that I was least... I was always like, I could use a cleric, he's probably not that bad, etc., etc. So, of all of them, the other two ones are just straight-up evil, and I wasn't interested in that, but... Okay, so... Right, so see, now it didn't work. But now it's saved. Because there's something seriously messed up about that. But anyway, it's saved this time. Okay. Lovely. Um, still. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm digging this uh, quite a bit is what I've seen so far. So, anyway, that was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you folks did too. I'm definitely going to be enjoying more of this. Um, as time goes on, I am looking forward to seeing how more of this kind of opens up, um, and so on. It's going to be cool. But that said, it is now time for me to, yeah, sorry, Zatoire, but I am uh, giving way to, uh, Alex, who is going to be doing some cross code and cross code's a really good game. Actually, I've had a chance to play that on my channel. Um, I've actually talked to some people that are doing some voice stuff with that. And my voice team, near vocalist has done work with it too. So I'm looking forward to, um, I might actually stick around and watch a little bit of that, although I have a lot of work to do, but I'm going to see if I can maybe lurk and work and all that kind of thing. But this is awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, really enjoying Pathfinder Kingmaker. That sw spider swarm thing was interesting, but if I really wanted, I could deal with that by just going and grabbing some uh, alchemist fire or whatever, and eventually I'll come back and deal with it, but not until I've dealt with the stuff that I have to right now. So that's going to be it for me. I will be back to you folks next week on Tuesday um, at 4 p.m. Eastern for more Pathfinder Kingmaker and Pen and Pixels as we go to episode 146. Six. Uh, also, I'll be on my channel on Friday to wrap up Lone Wolf HD Remastered and then Saturday for uh, D&D with viewers. So if you're interested in playing some Dungeons and Dragons, some pen and paper type with yours truly, I will be uh, doing that and that's going to be a good time. Last thing I want to mention is um, just very quickly, I mentioned this on my channel too. Um, if you get the chance and you are interested in tabletop stuff, emberwindgame.com, I mention it only because I'm doing a little bit of writing for them now, and I have a short story of mine called Sunlight and Sky that just went up over there. So if you're interested in some kind of new D&D &D stuff in a cool new world called uh, Axia, um, I would recommend checking that out. It's free. You can just head over there and take a look at it. But I wanted to mention it because I haven't had a chance to mention it on here. And, of course, I should also mention that this is, again, my three-year anniversary of streaming on GOG. I've been streaming on Twitch um, since 2000. 2012, but I've been streaming here since uh, late September 2015. So this is officially my three-year mark. Thank you for being with me for 145 episodes and counting of Pen and Pixels. I hope you enjoy it. Um, and otherwise, I'm looking forward to moving forward and uh, getting a chance to play a lot more with you folks over time. Um, I don't know if Alex is here in chat. I believe according to the schedule, unless I'm misreading it, that he's up next or she is up next with uh, CrossCode, I think, maybe, possibly, maybe. Um, but um, thank you. Thank you, older than you. But uh, yeah, I, that is going to be it for me. Thank you to everyone who was here today. Um, even if they're not here, I got to get going because, okay, I got to get going regardless because I got to go eat. But I'll be back, um, as I say, on Friday on my channel and next Tuesday for more Pathfinder Kingmaker. Until then, thanks, everybody. Uh, much love. I will catch all of you wonderful people soon. Um, and uh, congratulations to GOG for the 10 years. 10 full years of uh, time and we hope for 10 years and many more after that that's it for me thanks everybody i'll catch you all soon be good to each other have a good day